Greetings, yeah, my fellow Aryans. I'm your host, Mr. Gutrum Wagner Lover, but we gotta talk about the decaying city. Dawn looms of a Pernheim, illuminating the cobble roads and rotten smelling markets. Men and women, dressed in Chevy rags, clamber out from their homes for a day's daily toil. Children play amid its quiet streets, laughing and keeping a watchful eye to the skies, dressed in faux felt growl. The men of the Brotherhood patrol the streets and man the anti air emplacements around the city. The thump of their well shined boots sends the young ones scurrying to the shadows of their timber or timber, more fierce than any bomber can summon. In one dislapidated and abandoned corner of the city walks senior brother Valdemar alone with his partner absent, wreathing in bed, enduring a fever. Valdemar paid his uh, worry no heed. If the man is erring enough, he will recover besides in his absence. No one would write out his dereliction of duty. The choice to spend this free time, however, is not nearly as liberating in the district he patrols. There's nothing but broken and shattered buildings and rats, save for one squat and run-down bar. Stepping into it, he ha hails the waiter. This bar is a shameful establishment, says Valdemar. I order a full cup of your sour beer, and be quick about it. The Brotherhood shall handle your payment. The owner flushed, faced, went to fetch a dusty tankard and washed it in dirty water. Waldemar sighs, no other choice. A few moments later, his drink would arrive, foaming at its rims. He not dying to drink it. Meeting with the owner's gaze, he says, You seem to be holding something in, Untermensch. Speak, slave, or forever hold your peace. The owner seems struck and began, You people cannot do this to us. One day the will of Russia will rise up and crush you. Besides, are you also not Russian? He held his hand up. I've heard enough, he says. The Brotherhood has plans for us all, and... You will not stop us. He stands and spits into his pint. We will pay for this portion. He threw the door open and stormed out. So much for a drinking day. Won't you get two more iron? Five! A whole fat five political power, more war sport, and administrative efficiency. Societal development will begin to slowly improve. But I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should work for bread or work for our life. And overall, there's support for both sides. By the time it's recording, there's more support for work for your bread. Bermheim's industry is a starving beast. Two wars and continued German bombings have annihilated its factories, and the vermin that make up the majority of the Russian population have not had the metal to rebuild them, at least not without encouragement. Although we are loath to give aid to the undeserving, we may have to make exceptions for our pragmatic reasons. Pemheim's undesirables have, up until now, been given a meager ration befitting of their race status. The volunteering for factory work may be taken as a sign of slightly greater racial vigor, at least in comparison to the rest of the sniveling horde. This does not mean that we will be kind. The work will be harsh and unforgiving with long hours and difficult conditions. Though some among the Aryan caste may cringe at the thought of mercy to these savages, small concessions are necessary to keep the system running, which will give more inflation, but more growth, and doesn't give as much GDP growth compared to the other one, but we get the event in happy and joyous labor. Also followed up with labor for your nation. Ivan Kisilyev woke up every morning with a smile on his face. Despite his withered frame and worn clothes, Kisilyev woke up happy because he knew that he would be fed that day. The long hours, grueling to most others, and the utter lack of any safety precautions that would certainly deter many a laborer were disregarded by the middle-aged Russian. He had fought in the Great Patriotic War and survived, only to witness the collapse of the Union. He survived not just the war, but genocide, harsh winters, bandits, and famine. Famine was the worst of all to Kisilyev, who dreamed only of the bits of bread and soup he would earn toiling away, making bullets for the Aryan Brotherhood. He cared not for the dogma. Kisilyev had lost his convictions long ago now. He had only hoped to survive, and ironically enough, the brother was helping him do just that. We get no minimum wage with trinket minimum wage, which actually hurts us quite a bit. Less max factories. Uh, oh, Deef the Chief. Less cap. Slightly better monthly poverty change, which is not... which I'm okay with, actually. Industrial expertise, monthly change, and needed consumer goods. That seems relatively fair for that, but... Oh, cool. Boot off some other comments to go through, but in happy and joyous labor. Sergei okay. wakes up an hour before dawn every morning. He gets up and kneels at the bedpost of his small room, praying to the Trinity for his daily bread, after which he dresses up in his coarse garments. The landlord, an Aryan, never gave so much as glances at him or nor wonder at his absence. All that matters to that squat little man is his rent. Until recently, however, Sergei cannot pay him, subsisting on hard labor and his pity. Yesterday, however, caused a radical change in Sergei's life. The local Brotherhood Patrol brought something other than terror, jobs. From 6 in the morning to 10 in the evening, with extra rations and a little more pay, enough so that his landlord should not force him to sleep in the cold. Today, Sergei's pace is lighter than usual, happy that he has work, with money and food awaiting on the other side of the day. The plant is near his home, only a block away from where he lives. When he opened the door to the floors, he found a new few hundred men and women working on their respective tables, assembled into lines and ranks with dusty and unwieldy tools laid in front of them. Deeper into the factory, the sound of heavy machinery laboring roared into the ceilings, bouncing off walls on its ways down. The brothers clad in the gray attire watched them closely. Sometimes they would take an insubordinate worker outside and beat them, but so far, Sergei could not hear any gunshots. When lunch comes, the brother would uphold his word, serving broth and bread before sending them back to work. At ten in the evening, as promised, they let him go. The commanding officer gave gives them their pay, as well as some bread for dinner. Sergei has never worked so, as hard in his life, nor has he ever been in his, uh, never has been in so much terror. As soon as he entered his room, 
He claps, forgetting his nightly prayer. A happy labor as a productive labor. Oh, oh, willing labor force. More production efficiency retention, cap, and growth. Miscellaneous costs and billions, uh oh. Industrial expertise goes up and slightly increases workday, 14 hour workday. Uh, so can we raid anybody? Uh, we can't do v we can't do uh, Order St. George, which sucks. Viaka, we could raid against him eventually, too. Um, Euro League is nothing as a Taos, no way. Mm, either this one or Order. But they do have stuff up here, so. And I think we did raid it successfully, maybe? I don't know, we might have raided Viaka off screen. I honestly can't remember. I do so many campaigns, I cannot remember what we do anymore. Uh, but we're doing okay. Uh, however, the economy is not doing great just because inflation is going up and down. It's fine, whatever. We have a, a relatively large deficit just because of all of the military spending we're doing right now. Because we have like these eight divisions are not bad. They're actually like what's it, 20 combo width, 18 combo width, 20 combo width with artillery. So we're gonna have a very strong military. It's costing us a lot, but it's worth it. It's, it's worth it in the end. But our industrial army, well, it is noble to fight with meager technology, as the Germanic tribes did in ages long past. Our race must eventually adopt mechanized warfare in order to survive. This does not mean abandoning one's honorable traditions, after all. The Germans conquered most of Europe, and so did wedded firmly to the Aryan heritage. Luckily, we appear to be following in their footsteps. Our industrial recovery, aided by the labor of the lower caste was we press into service, is progressing admirably, of course. Most of this production is military, as we need to improve ourselves in rational combat if we wish to survive. Munitions are obviously vital for our frontline battle, but a sustainable offensive cannot be mounted without fuel. The task now is to decide which areas we want to focus our needs on. Uh -uh. Ooh. More GDP, the foyer's inspection, topic of the day. In a culture where weakness means death, and every member of the elite is constantly on the lookout for ways to push, put each other down and elevate themselves, people are prone to gossiping. Parmheim has is or was a spiderweb of intrigue. Oh, look at that, the revolt that failed. Oh, that sucks for you. People are prone to gossiping, of course. Members of the Aryan class constantly share choice pieces of potentially darning information in exchange for favors and support. No one fascinated and frustrated uh, Parmheim's network of informants more than a figure by the name of Siegfried Schultz, just who was his mem. What brought him here? How he was climbing the ranks so quickly? While conspiracies were as natural to, as air to the Aryans, each had his own theory. I'm telling you, he's a foreign agent. Abwehr or CIA or something. Why else would he come here out of the blue? One would say to his fellows. Another would repost. That's a crock of crap. I think he's related to the foyer. It's a complete nepotism. A third senator now would chip in, shocking his brother. And I've met him, you know. The man's a political visionary. He'll be running this place someday, mark my words. A hurricane of attention and speculation seemed to follow Schultz everywhere he went, and only grew in magnitude as it continued his ascendancy through the Aryan Brotherhood's power structure. If the foyer took notice, whoever this outsider was, he was certainly had charisma. Could this be of something to take advantage of, or was it best to hold Schultz down before he rose too far? A promotion is an order? Every man needs to learn his place, and Schultz is no exception. I kind of want to do this one more, but we do need to keep some political power. Like, Yeah, we definitely, 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 definitely need to get some political power. I've got 38 more manpower. Is that how much we get every month? That kind of sucks. But, oh well. Side development's not looking super great. Power tools. Um, yeah, getting up here would be much better to do. Yeah. It's not looking great. We do have eight divisions, which is nice, but still. Still. How's the economy looking? Uh, going a little higher. Oh, inflation did go up a little higher as well. I don't like how much this is costing us, but growth is not bad. Growth is... It's not bad. Industrial Army, though, is really good. But I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should go with reopen the munitions plants or we should do reopen the foundries. And there's support for both sides, but overall, at the time of this recording, there's more support for reopen the refineries, which we will do next after we read A Mother and Her Daughter. I'm home, Sophia said, entering her home, carrying in her bag, bread, and a little bit of money. It was a small room, and sharing it with her daughter only made it more mi minute. Still, she labored and worked without complaint if that meant that her dear Natsia would live another day without hunger. The place was dark, and with a lone candle sitting on a bedside stand illuminating the air. The tiny bed is covered in a mountain of dirty laundry, and with the lowest layer being their cleanest garments. I had poked out of the mess. Mother, a weak and trembling voice called out. Are you there? Sophia rushed to her side, saying, Nazia, ma Nazia, my dear, do not exert yourself. Sophia laid her hands on Nazia's forehead. Thank the Lord that your temperature has gone down. Have you eaten the meals I prepared for you? A nod. Did you drink the medicine? Some bitter herbs, better than nothing, but another nod. Oh, good, Sophia said, heaving a big sigh. I have brought you some bread for you to eat. She saw Nazia smile at the happiest moment in her life. And saw it fade and crumble, she asked. Have you eaten? Her stomach seemed to grumble in response, but she nodded her head yes. Thus began Natsia's dinner. Her mother broke off pieces of bread for her as, as she ate. Sophia took its crumbs and swiped it off the bed. When it was over, they talked. Natsia, now stronger than with some fuel in her belly, led the conversation. How's your work, mother? She said. Did the men in grey treat you well? Sophia's mind flashed to the time when they struck her fellow worker, an aged man who was there for just a the bread. Yes, they have, and it's no cause for you to worry. Natsia puffed her lips. Good. Otherwise, I would beat them black and blue. Sophia laughed, something she hadn't done in a long time, and tussled her daughter's hair. She embraced Natsia. Both of them drifted to sleep in peace together. Even in the darkest place, the saw some hope. It would get point zero zero one billions more in debt. Well, that sucks. Hmm. 
Either or St. George or this one, so. You just gotta keep an eye on that. We open the fineries. Oil is, in a sense, the blood of the earth. <clears throat> It is also the blood of a modern society, the life stuff that keeps its power running and its army moving. The veins of the Reich extend across Europe, keeping the world's greatest empires alive before the glorious destruction of the USSR. By the Germans, Permheim was a regional center of oil production since then. Its refiners have remained mostly empty, uh, other than during a brief period during the West Russian War. Another industry has progressed to the point where we can reopen them once more, not for the benefit of the degenerate socialists, but for the Aryan race. Our empire is still small, but powered by the Earth's bounty, our armies will travel across Western Russia, spreading the dom domination of the Aryan race Unimpeded. Another production unit. Spend a little bit more money. We get the event Black Gold. Um, yeah, they don't have any loot yet. These guys do have loot, but they've been raided in the past, so I am just ready to raid because we do get twenty percent more attack. So raiding, we should do really quite well on, at least in theory. But happy May, almost June nineteen sixty three, everybody. We could really use more stability. Death of Jawaharlal Nehru. Oh, that sucks, bro. Sucks. Sucks for, uh, for India, I guess. But happy June, everybody. Happy, happy June. One of the comments was, uh, we're losing a lot of the attacks we're doing and raiding because we don't have enough equipment. That is very true. We do have quite a bit of anti-tank, though. And, they, and guns now. That's actually really nice. So that's not bad. Uh, they don't have any loot yet. Oh, dang it. I just want to loot. Actually, I don't mind people trying to attack us because we can win and do really well and get some stuff, too. And maybe slightly more stability, so I'm kind of just kind of... Your league, no thanks. Oh, a little bit of lag. UDP victory in Turkey, hey? We should be able to win down here now, right? Gosh, you're saying, come on, okay, move, 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 Go. These guys, oh, is that Samara and Vyaka killing each other? Nice. It's Kamal's legacy darned. The Foyer's inspection. Brother Wagner, said her senior brother, dressed in an all-black uniform, welcome to the training fields. In front of them stood several platoons of men, each dressed. Oh. Oh, look at that one. Uh, in the same outfit, standing at attention. As you can see, we've prepared for your arrival. Examine the man before you, uh, before you to your heart's desire. They were the perfect Aryan specimen, standing proud in the dark, cold earth, points of Aryan light, amid a Russian darkness. Their arms bore the armband that all brothers of the Brotherhood wore, a piece of red fabric with a white circle in the middle of which was a swastika. Thank you, uh, Brother Dietrich. Wagner said, it is an honor to examine these fine examples of the Aryan blood within us. Dashing they were, and tall, with a ruddy reddish hue on their cheeks, not one of them averted their eyes when they met Wagner's instead. And each were a fire, burning with enthusiasm, its crackle audible uh, to his ears. I see you have trained them very well. Tell me, Dietrich, the old brother turned his head to face Wagner. Did your men eat well last night? Of course, sir. The slaves assigned to this regiment were of the highest quality. Dietrich snorted. I might I even say they make for excellent cooks. Thank you for that, sir. As was, he pointed to the rifles and machine guns of the men, the munitions and equipment. No need to thank me, brother. A workman must have the best tools to do his task, must he not? You and your regiment have proven them yourselves worthy of the labor the slaves have put into your tools. Thank you, sir, and shall we proceed? Lead the way, brother. Lead the way. Please say no. I want to beat the crap out of you if you possibly can. How strong are you guys? They're not that strong. Nice. Please let us fight them. I think we can... We... Darn it. Hmm. Because, you know, let's do schools next. Darn it, I wanted to beat them up, man. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's not much. 0.26 billion? 0.252 billion. I was like cutting it down, so. 4.1% is not bad either. Inflation is a lot less than 1%, that's not bad either. 0.2 quarter of a billion dollars. Well, could be worse. Aryan cavalry, migration and long distance conquest have been the essential element of Aryan life for centuries, and indeed the supplanting of a weak race by a stronger one moving onto its range as a fact of nature. In the modern day, we express this racial instinct not via horse or ship by truck and tank. Mechanized infantry was the engine of the German subjugation of Europe, the premier demonstration of the Aryan drive to expand in recent history. We, restricted to Permheim and its surroundings, have remained disgustingly sedentary for too long as we've not had the resources to power a truck fleet. The reconstruction of our refiners has finally allowed us to follow in the footsteps of our migratory ancestors, with a vehicle supply that is the envy of Western Russia. We will be as the Goths were to Rome, a tidal wave of Germanic superiority, cleansing the region by force. But black gold, my friends, the reopening of the the refinery located a short distance north of Pernheim was filled with the same sort of pompous ceremony that the Aryan brother applied to pretty much everything. Twelve Aryan managers goosed up from the city to the refinery, several hundred bedraggled workers marching behind him at a gunpoint. One of them carried a flag proudly emblazoned with a swastika standard, as though the reconstruction of a Soviet refinery was an ex existential victory for the Aryan race. 
For them, perhaps it was. Just outside of the building, one of the officials signaled that he would speak, and the soldiers herded their prisoners into a loose audience with a few strategic battlefield butts. They stood with rapt attention as it began. Long ago, far even before the ancient ancestors of the Aryans set up their majestic empire, millions of creatures lived and died, vanquished when they could not keep up with the pressures of natural selection. They were drawn under the earth by the passage of time, their remains crushed and blasted by enormous weight and heat into what we recognize as petroleum. In a sense, they have been smashed under the planet's boot. It is fitting, then, that our state, built upon the backs of those too weak to claw themselves a place in it, relies so heavily upon oil. It is the lifeblood of the earth, and it will be the potent blood of the next Reich! The soldiers quickly started clapping, and after being persuaded with several solid kicks, the workers reluctantly followed. When the applause died down, they escorted the laborers into the refinery. The dark flames rose from which could be seen all across the city as the work began. The purest oil for the purest race. The city is slaughtered. Per Armheim has been rejuvenated. The air of decay and de degradation that once filled the streets has been filled with one of toil and martial vigor. The shiftless subhuman majority has been put to work, re-establishing our industry, and the weapons of war flow out of our factories in impressive numbers. Per Armheim is now an engine of death. The nexus of the coming racial struggle against the scum, degenerates, and race traders that occupy the vast majority of Russia. Besides the bare necessities required to keep our labors running, it produces only what is needed for combat. Our blood is pure, our iron is mighty, and our hearts are full of righteous hatred. We've created the perfect staging ground for expansion across the region, and that is all that is left to do is to begin. With all of Chief Executive Suzuki, oh boy, more growth 1.25% is pretty nice. Get increase the GDP by... You know, 0 0.05 billion. Oh, look at that. Argentine election. A blast of the past. Inflation will increase as well, which is fine. Increase more. And we get the event city of slaughter. Are we losing PP? We are losing PP again. God dang it. The budget balance is really bad. That's really, 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 really not good. Not good at all. Yeah, I don't like that. Slavery hurts us a little bit. Income taxation hurts us a little bit. Um, yeah. Dysfunctional high command. <sighs> That's enough good. Aryan Cavalry, though, is pretty nice, though. Doc Riders. It was a scarcely passed on. A solitary truck rumbled down the cracked, long abandoned road. Its only occupant was a smuggler, en route to grab and run guns to the villages on the outskirts of the Aryan Brotherhood's territory. This was risky business. The Brotherhood's soldiers were renowned throughout the region for their sheer aggression and brutality, but their presence outside of Fermheim was limited enough that it was worth the risk. After all, that brutality only made peasants more willing to purchase a means of self defense. He hummed a half-remembered folk song and drummed his little fingers on the dashboard. Things could get dull on the road, with only the engine's growl keeping him company, his thoughts quickly drifted to other matters. Uh, <clears throat> the payment he'd get after completing his latest job and finding a mechanic out in the countryside a difficult task. The truck was an old one, driven in rough conditions, and the engine had been making disquieting sounds for a while. Perhaps he needed to get it checked. The sudden rip of a gunshot through the roaring air interrupted his worries. Looking behind him, he could see who was responsible. A convoy of brand new trucks roared behind him. Eagles and swastikas painted on their sides, and their occupants, a rowdy band of Aryan raiders, fired rifles in the air with glee. He quickly pulled off the road as they sped by, either not noticing him or simply not caring. As he watched them thunder into the distance, two new thoughts entered his head. The first that, that his customers would probably not survive the next few hours. The second was that he needed a career change. The Reich hits the road. Oh, we get more to his infantry. Now, we keep adding more to the debt, but that's almost nothing, so I'm kind of okay with that. I'm thinking about doing the military austerity just for now, but let's not do that yet. Scavenge for loot. Just so that people can start trying to hit us and raid us. So after the city of slaughter, look at that. Cleansing Russia. Oh. The People's Republic of the Philippines declared war on the U.S. forces in the Philippines. Cool. We are the Aryan Brotherhood. Strong, committed, and above all pure. For a long time. We have allowed our nation to be trampled upon no more, though. It is time for us to rise to the occasion. Uh, <clears throat> and forge ourselves a nation of pure, strong, and independent people to secure a position among the most honorable Aryans there are. Prepare the right of ascension. Prepare our brave Aryan soldiers. We must begin our march on Russia and demonstrate to the warlord and Soviet alike the superiority of our blood and our ways. It is time that we cleanse our nation by force if necessary, to show our strength and bring a kicking and screaming into the Aryan century. More political power, more war support is very good. Um, and we slightly increases minority rights, called state oppression. Sounds great to us. Yeah, we don't have, we have enough political power now. Oh, we prepared another raid. Oh, nice. Did we get it? No, did we didn't get it. Yeah. There you go. Cleansing Russia. Um, anyone else we can do? The Ak has nothing. They have nothing. And... Well, they got enough loot. We could probably do them again. But, oh, points away is better. City of Slaughter. Gutron Wagner, the furrier of the Aryan Brotherhood and the greatest despot of West Russia, was proud of many things. He was proud of his blood, the mighty Aryan stock that impelled him towards great, uh, 
and terrible deeds. He was proud of his martial spirit, his leadership, and his deep knowledge of the principles of politics and war, and his tireless will to reshape the world. He had a haughty admiration, unburdened by doubt or reason, for himself as a pinnacle of racial development. Looking out on the city of Perm from the Brotherhood's Volkshalle, he felt prouder than ever before, not only for his own myriad virtues, but for everything his people had accomplished. It had a stark beauty to it. The buildings were concrete blocks, the decadent Horus historic structures cleared away by war and demolition to make way for the needs of the race the streets once teeming with bolshevik filth were now filled with only quiet orderly slave crews watched carefully over by o aryan overseers new factors appeared seemingly every day filling the skies with smog and pumping out nothing else but the finest weapons of war for his legions Wagner taken this disorderly mess that was perm and beat it, and it viciously into shape now it's hundreds of thousands of inhabitants aryan or slave were seemingly out of a single mind you know by force towards a single purpose the utter annihilation of anyone who would stand in the way of the aryan brotherhood the Reich gears up for war. We get rebuilt industry, three or more efficiency growth and output. Uh, admin efficiency will begin to improve, slightly increases slavery and workplace safety, and economy become more centralized by 2.5%. Nice. Uh, other comments included, we should read the Deutsch economics description. We can in a little bit. We are basically considered East Aryans or Slavic Aryans, yes. And we should do a Glenn campaign from the start, so basically plays America. That'd be kind of fun. Actually, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad I caught that one too. And someone says we should play the Philippines. Well, I want to play the Philippines eventually, but I want to wait till they get a focus tree, because right now none of them have a focus tree, which is sad, but eventually they all will. And I promise you, I will play every single nation that has a focus tree in this mod, including Long Yun's Yunnan Cleek and whatnot, too. So we'll get there eventually. I promise you that. 0.62, not bad. Dead ceiling is 110%, which is not which is not bad, but I wish it was better, but whatever. We do look like we need more electrical grid. Or Zach wins the Malaya election. Malaya election. Um, we should be able to win if they have only two divisions on the border. Hope we can win, so. Should be able to. And what was I thinking of? Oh, yeah. Read the economic description. Deutsch economics. Less of a proper codified system and more of a shallow attempt at imitating the German Reich's superior Aryan economics. The most noticeable features of the system, as it exists currently, are the names naming of large state-run industrial enterprises after famous German corporations, an emphasis on the use of unpaid involuntary labor, and the overall re reorganization of the industrial economy to fit the needs of the state as opposed to individual consumers. Perhaps it may be regarded as a success for the Aryan Brotherhood that its economy has succeeded in aping that of the Germans at least by its frequent economic crises and general inefficiencies. We're more efficient than the home daddies at home. It's 85 out of possible 100. Not bad. And terrible. Is it going up for us? Our maximum credit rating is terrible and our minimum credit rating is junk. Wait, what do you mean? The varies between minimum and maximum? Maximum credit rating is terrible. What a bunch of BS. We're going to get to prime. We will. And if we don't, then it's just all just a Jewish plot. But, you know, whatever. I bring counsel. Oh! God, can, can, you just, can you just raid you, please? Please. I just want to raid you. Come on, man. Oh. We a little bit of money there. Pay slightly more debt. Doesn't help with that much, but, you know, what? we'll do whatever we can. Ah. Uh, now what? Anything else? We're still losing political power. God dang, that sucks so much. Um, I want to do external investments. So we can get 0.187. But I think I want to wait still. And um, we can do that later on. Reconnect Soviet power grids because we need need more we do, we need more grid stuff. But I think at this point... Is there anything else we can really do? Because focuses are done. Do we? I think we just have to wait maybe until... Um, the Reich... The actual Reich collapses... So, I could be wrong about that, but I could also be very right or wrong. Let's see, we have eight divisions, so do we need to train? Yeah, continue training. Luckily, we have almost enough manpower, hopefully, for all these divisions after we've got so many. And we have the Brotherhood's Domain as well. Flat 1,500 and 500 manpower for each own state, so. Donuts can test. Don't even think, have to think about that too much, which is very nice. Yeah. Uh, where are we for this stuff? Just equipment. Um... Slowly improving here too. Two and a half is not bad. Party is still pretty bad. Party rate is ninety-seven percent. It is what it is. Hitler's died. Nice. Good job, Hitler. Good job. Almost sixty percent. I kind of want to do like a temp tax site, but that's not going to fill out this because military spending is just so much. Civilian spending is like nothing. <sighs> Fresh out the press. Yeah, that's kind of high-ish. Okay, can you stop looking? Production units, of course. 
Oop, a little bit of lag. I think the German Civil War is starting right now because it's lagging so hard. Yeah, it is. It's lagging hard. Oh my goodness. And we should. There you go. There it fired. So it begins. And there goes the world, which I've not seen Burgundy. The other time's uh, recording collapse yet, but maybe maybe this campaign. Maybe not. We'll see. 57.8.62 billion in GDP. Oh, and probably I think there is the town's recording as well. A sub mod for the uh, this Hutig's or ex commissariat, but I could be wrong about that. Oh, Austin, I still place Austin as well. That looks pretty bad. The bombing stopped. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Clear skies, dark clouds. Oh, hello. I didn't even click on it, but sure, why not? Ah, still knocked. For the past week or so, the German bombers are nowhere to be seen. Our Aryan brethren have deserted the skies, presumably to concentrate on their own affairs. The situation in Germany must be dire enough that the Führer has judged it appropriate to withdraw from the skies of Russia and let the intermesh bloom again. Our nights and days are now silent without a crash of a shrapnel or screams of alarms. As the only Aryan enclave in Russia, we cannot let the situation get out of hand. As the Untermensch themselves prepare to reclaim Russia for the end, so once the Brotherhood grow up and challenge them, in the absence of the fear that the Germans bring, we must step up to restore them and stem the tide of the Untermensch that surround us. We shall stand and fight like never before, for we have never been truly alone with the Germans in the sky. Suffer what they must. Oh, we get a prison. That's not bad. I like that. Spado assumes control. What is this? Now or never? Um, That's some extreme lag. If we could beat the crap out of them, I would love to. Oh, this is not even... A PRM, AB bombing, Gestapo report. Ooh, I like the Gestapo. Contact within Russia. Starts a border war ever onwards. Swords into plowshares. Um, more war sport. More hands for the smelters. What do we want immediately first? A city that never sleeps. More growth immediately would be very nice. Full, full speed ahead. More prisoners for the right. Oh, more billions. Well, our chance best security. I want to get that growth as fast as possible, so. Plus, here's in a sword. Now that the Germans have abandoned the Brotherhood. Withdrawing his planes from our skies, we must learn to stand alone. We can no longer for the frivolity of the past, as neither luxury nor leisure could truly shield us from the doom that awaits beyond our failure. However, many of our inferiors who toil in the factories, as well as some in the Brotherhood itself, do not embrace this doctrine. In terms of utmost emergency, they fill themselves full of goods better used for war. No more. We shall cease this folly. No longer shall the Brotherhood tolerate the decadence of either Untermensch or Aryan, not, while it is very, its very survival is at stake. Neither worker nor soldier shall make any more trivialities. Only war. Only when victory is in our hands shall we finally indulge in the spoils of our struggle. Until then, we all must serve the Brotherhood and sweat or blood. We can buy infantry equipment, but no. Dark skies of Permheim. To some within the Brotherhood, Germany's session of its campaign of fear and tears is a disaster, for how would the Brotherhood survive without the aid of its distant brethren? However, the absence of any German presence presents itself only, not only, as a danger, but also an opportunity. The factories, which now have to be hidden during the campaign, can now show themselves out in the open. Without fear of shrapnel, the brothers who had had to man anti-air emplacements now find themselves without work. To exploit this opening, we shall open more and more plants in many factories in Permheim, and our newly freed brothers shall find themselves in the aisles of the floors of the factories, suppressing so dissent. The Germans have abandoned the area. While we wait for their return, the industry of the Untermensch, couched by the iron hand of the Brotherhood, shall fill the skies with suit and ash, with neither mercy nor restraint. Very good. A steel, and more GDP, tungsten, sound perfect to me. A city that never sleeps. Uh, the city of Permheim uh, has, uh, the home of the Brotherhood ever since its inception, has seen unprecedented growth in both its population and industrial output since the end of the German bombing. For the Brotherhood, however, even this is not enough. Our destiny demands more of us, and for the trials ahead, even Permheim itself might not be sufficient. As it has always been, the Brotherhood has taken this into account, and though it is not to be enough, it will have to do. Tonight, the city shall have its final slumber. When it wakes in the morning, its occupants, both Untermensch and Aryan, shall labor. Without exception, we shall increase the quotas and extend the work hours needed to achieve it. We will punish those whoever does not meet what is demanded of them. Whether it be blood, sweat, or even precious life itself, the Brotherhood shall not doubt in giving. It shall not second-guess its desire for its for the final victory. Good. Can we raid anybody? I don't want to raid. Um... Or St. George, maybe. Vyaka? Maybe? Yes? No? Hmm. South African War, not bad. Pretty laggy right now, though. South African War, African Chaos. Pretty, yeah, pretty typical. No one cares about Africa, though. Maybe a couple people in America. Some Warhawks, probably, in America. Yeah, at least the is looking slightly better. That's just a straight line going up. 
And it started stagnating here too, which is not good. But, oh well. Increase our GDP by 3%. 0 0.019. More war support. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, it's lagging extremely hard. TNO is lagging extremely hard more. So much more when Tubox Theory came out. Holy crap. I mean, it makes sense when you have like like 45 people killing each other. Like here. Like it's so many people. Oh my goodness. Wouldn't want to be over there. More hands for the smelters. Oh. See, that never sleeps, of course. Uh, Vyaka would be nice and all, but... Eh. We're getting close to either one of these two. Um, a gun for every hand. We can wait for some of the stuff. I'll go now or never. But over the past weeks and days, the bombers that look over the Russian skies have disappeared. The foyer, far away in the heartlands of Germany, has recalled them for its purposes. Rumors of a civil war travel further east, carried by fearful whispers of prisoners and traitors alike. The Untermensch, in the absence of our benevolent Aryan overlords, will no doubt stand our presence no longer. From their holes in the ground, they will crawl out, ready to challenge Aryan rule over these lands again. It's now or never. Before enemies can rise against us, we must stand. The time for frivolous raids and mindless carnage is fading fast and sure. Survival is no longer enough for the Brotherhood. Our Brotherhood must now stand above the tide of the Untermensch and purify Russia. It must expand and subjugate. If it does not, it will perish. either one of these two. I wanted to do be this one, but there's no guarantee that I'm going to get loot soon anyways. Mm, you know what? Let's do it like this. Just in case. Just start planning for it. Oh, they're getting raided. God dang it. Oh, no wonder. Oh, whatever. There you go. Yeah. Has not been raided. Just get some loot. I want to raid you. That's all. Uh, our chance of Bashkiria. To the south of Permheim lay the land of Bashkiria, a national state proclaimed in the aftermath of the West Russian War. Though we had the opportunity to play with and prey before the bombing stopped, now is no longer a game. The Brothers need to expand, and Bashkiria seems to be a prime estate for such endeavors. Their factories can churn out guns for the Brothers' armies, and their people can provide the necessary labor to ensure a steady, uninterrupted, uninterrupted supply of weaponry. However, before moving into the Bashkiria proper, the Brotherhood will prepare itself. We will redirect our raids against them, wounding them with a thousand cuts before the time comes to finish them off. At the same time, our new secret police, the Gestapo, will infiltrate the territories of Bashkiria on the lookout for secrets and weaknesses. Before we are through with them, they will break and they will beg for the end to come soon. And then, stop, stop, they lose command power. We get more base war support, which is pretty nice. And they lose stuff here. Let's do this one first. Oh, bombing Gestapo report and contacts among the Russians. The Republic of Bashkir, by its name, is a hastily cobbled together nation held only together by a fragile alliance of Russians and Bashkirs. Intertwined by the mutual need for safety and defense, a seemingly liberal state that upholds the rights of minorities, it has to balance itself between the many interests of its ethnic constituents. Though Russians and Bashkirs are untimensh, the Brotherhood has found the blood to be on the side of the former. Before any attack on Bashkiria itself can occur, we need to widen the cracks that emerge between them. Though not many will join the Brotherhood willingly, there are Russians from whom we can extract loyalty against the Bashkir state. This will spread ethnic ethnic unrest among the Russians and in Bashkir's fraction the political landscape of the Republic. Divided and weakened, they will not be in any state to retaliate against the Brotherhood, like lambs to the slaughter. Well, as you can see right now, we've exploited the cracks. With the vision sown and the weaknesses made known, the Republic of Bashkiria, for all their numerical advantages against us, now lay at the mercy of the Brotherhood. Bickering plagues their legislatures, and unrest foments in the smallest villages, paralyzing their political capabilities. All the while, our Gestapo is doing their work in the shadows, feeding the Brotherhood with information regarding the Republic's weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Bashkiria has never been more of a prime target for the Brotherhood. It's time for the Brotherhood to pounce on its chosen prey. For the first time since the end of the bombings, the armies of the Brotherhood will not march in the name of looting or raiding alone, but war. We will destroy them and claim the prize that lay within their lands for ourselves. The Brotherhood shall not doubt itself at this critical hour. We will crush the Untermensch and trod them under our feet. That was pretty quick. Fifty for the Brotherhood. The glorious city of Permheim and its ancient inhabitants were engulfed in joy and celebration as their brave warriors returned home from battle from the ba with uh, Bashkir whelps, full of stories of glory and plunder. The Bashkirs, as expected, fell under their furious onslaught or turned tail like the cowards they were and slunk back into the caves. Our glorious battles cause for celebration enough, but more than this, we are now in possession of a silver of their land, as it should be. As the foyer has proclaimed, once our mission is done, all of the future Reich is to become a living space for the Brotherhood, another victory for the Aryans, and ever onwards. While the cruel, degenerate Slavs around us wish to only crawl in the marked, grotesque conditions their race is so accustomed to, it is us Aryans who strive to see a future where the higher races of this fractured continent rule over a subservient lower class of Slavic Untermensch. This future, while inevitable, will not happen without our iron will and the catalyst for its creation. 
and to the strong and enlightened guidance of our pure-blooded ruler, Guthrum Wagner. The Aryan race will finally bring order to the jungle of chaos that is Ruslan. The Slavs will have proved time and time again their inability to manage themselves in a civilized manner. This further pr proved by the Bolshevism and the weak-minded nationalism that plagues this United States today. Our massive race of Aryans must prove our supremacy through our conquest and domination of these inferior peoples. Slight money. But slight money, regardless, helps us pay off at least a little bit of our debt. As our GDP does increase. Oh, we actually got the tile too. Oh, look at that. That's awesome. Um, can we core this? That's my main concern. Here, give it to those guys. Civilian oversight's fine. Oh, hello. Thank you. Um, oh, we were able to raid them as well before we did this too, which is pretty nice as well. Uh, can we core this at all? Uh, no, that's not good. That's not good. Because we have no manpower for this, but whatever. Suffer what they must. The warriors of Slavic incompetence prove their value, or they're the lack of, every day in the prison's camps that stretch miles and miles throughout the countryside of renewed living space. It was their cowardice and their characteristics of the weaker race that brought them crawling then with a white flag to our soldiers. They were lucky that we didn't shoot them then, for a bullet is barely worth what their pitiful lives are worth. Now they rot in the tent cities, taking up valuable resources in food, water, and men. While well, we put so many men, or so many to a deserving death for a minor act of insurrection, and even more by labor, the constant stream of prisoners that we capture in our war of Aryan liberation grows by the day. Orders for summary executions have been sent to the camps, and quotas increased. We only hope their numbers made to a window now. They must suffer for what that is the natural position of a slave. The foyer speech. Transcription of the official Brotherhood speech delivered by Guthrum Wagner, Men of the Brotherhood. May we begin the speech with respect to the great Adolf Hitler and the Book of Mein Kampf, a book to which we owe our redemption, Heil Hitler, and our crusade to rid these rightfully Aryan lands of the Slavic filth who inhabit it. We find the legions of Aryans of our Brotherhood have found great success. On all fronts, we find the inferior races dispersed as they failed to put a dent in our strong forces. This only furthers evidence of Aryan supremacy and the rightful place of a Slav subserviency. Applause and quiet cheering. But we cannot be content with these successes. <clears throat> For every Slav we kill, there are hundreds more who march to stamp out Aryan civilization, the pinnacle of the world. I assure you, comrades, that we must be ever diligent in our efforts and not forget the purpose of our legions. The end of the Slavic barbarians and their relegation to our slaves. Our prophet of our time, the prophet, Guthrum Wagner. More political power is very nice, too. In that case, we could really use this. At least getting two more power grid stuff would be so nice. But we could train our troops as well. We lose some daily political power. Actually, we're already losing political power, but... A thousand more manpower would be really nice to have. I, I got, we gotta wait though. We gotta wait. As, as, as this goes poorly too, anyways. I mean, we'll just do. Um, I'll end up doing this again off screen. But more prisoners for the right. We have received more and more requests from high-ranking Brotherhood officers for an interesting resource. It is not loot, trophies, but captured live Slavs and Bashkirs. The important word being live, for these people are to be the most humble offering from our Aryan Brotherhood to be put through the right of ascension. When one's duty. When doing one's duty to the Brotherhood, there's nothing more important than the strongest dedication one can offer. We demand nothing less. Nocturnal expeditions to occupied villages must be must return the needed, physically able, prisoners to be brought back to Permine to fulfill the needs of our officers. The slaves lot. The crack of a rifle shook Yolisi's uh, mind from daydreaming. Still half asleep, he wondered if it had torn it through him. His bloody hands, raw from the months of hard labor, dyed the spade red and found himself thinking nothing of the dirt he shoveled over the cold, expressionless body beneath him. What's the difference between us? He let his mind ponder. In moments of weakness, he almost found himself envy of those he piled high into the ditches four feet across, five feet deep. At least he gets some rest. Not a year before, he would have been shocked to hear he would spend much of his days emptying and refilling holes, much less these ones. A simple existence in a village not far from Ufa. He was one of the few born after the war. He had watched his father go off and not come back in the second one, and the cries of his mother stayed with him ever since. Five, six, no, four months ago, which felt like a lifetime in this heck. An old hunting shotgun was thrusted into his hands, and his young mind thrown into an open field. The Brotherhood, as they called themselves in a mix of broken Russian and German, came with flamethrowers and bayonets, and without firing a shot, Yevgeny ran. He ran and re ran, but he wasn't fast enough. A bullet caught him in the shoulder, and his body thrown onto a truck, go bound God knows where. But now, with every thrust of this shovel, his body ages weeks. They toil from dawn to dusk, many sleeping feet beneath the frozen earth. The one constant is the work in the bullets. If there was only way out, he's toyed with ideas in his mind. Yelisi stopped for a moment. In that moment, he's so intrigued by the thought of leaving, he dropped his shovel. Despite the shouts and stares, he was already gone. Seconds later, he dropped too. Sleep now, Yelisi. The rest of you never got in life. Or the rest you never got in life. Hey, more stability. We're actually positive, or at least not negative. Solitary control intensify the raids. I like that one. More hands for the smelters. We lose some political power, lose some stability. God dang it. 
Okay. From before the end of the bombing campaign, we have kept a stockpile of prisoners deemed a waste of ammo to execute, preferring to use them as fodder in our initial rituals. In the meantime, they have been a waste of both food and space to keep, while contributing nothing for the Brotherhood except to ensure a scant but steady flow of new brothers. As our emergency has demanded of us, we must work these captives until the moment chosen for them comes. The Brotherhood might have been might have once found it prudent to indulge these parasites, but this too will stop. We should take them out of their pens and prisons and herd them to factory floors under the careful watch of our inspectors and officers. On it, they shall toil for the blood, and while they wait in fear and terror of their upcoming hour, even the merit and hardships of the labor will not save them. Brothers, the stars were strewn across the sky like paint on a canvas of a great artist. It was under this canopy that the story as old as time played out like it had billions of times before. But this felt different to these quite literally star-crossed lovers, not like the stories and books where men and women fall into each other's embrace, no. This was something real and tangible to Laventry and Nadia, who had grown up together long enough to find their first partner in each other, and they were infatuated. While Nadia had her eyes trained on a particularly bright star, she felt his hand gently fall over hers. The feeling in her gut went from the nervous flurry of emotion to a true storm, her heart racing. There they shared this moment, nothing but pure joy in each other's embrace, a feeling so warm and true that they didn't hear the heavy-footed steps of a black-clad soldier. Dressed in pure shadow and his face covered, he had to come to take back human cargo, a mission he never failed. The bliss of the moment was too much for Leventry to bear. Shifting his head down to look at hers, her amber hair glistened ever so slightly in the moonlight, her eyes dancing from star to star, constellation to constellation, for the first time in his life. He felt that what he was doing was undeniably right. Bringing his hand from hers to her head, he guided her unbelievably smooth face to his, smiling like a fool who closed his eyes and leaned into, but he never met the lips of the girl, who moments earlier had been interested from his face. Incredulously, he opened his eyes and refocused his hearing. Standing up, he saw her, struggling in the arms of a shadowy figure. Hello there, my friend. I would seem you fell asleep with a slave, he said, throwing her onto the bed of a truck. Rushing towards him, Leventry tripped on a rock and fell unconscious. When he woke, he awoke to a crowd of smiling faces. Your brother now, Elijah. You're our brother, one of us. One of us. A gun for every hand. As the Brotherhood gathers the blood from its raids and wars, its ranks swell to brimming. The slaves that serve it now number the thousands. A persistent shortage plagued it, however. For the average soldier in its armies, rifles and guns are in short supply, the higher ranks, and the officer corps use their position to leverage themselves to receive the newest weaponry, all the while bread and butter of the army must fight for scraps or make do with makeshift equipment. To remedy the situation, the High Command of the Brotherhood has seen it fit to approve a new design for a simplified battle rifle for the ranks. Now every Aryan or slave that fights for the Brotherhood shall no longer find themselves in lack. Their palms shall no longer find themselves without arms, no matter how terrible, for is it not true that a rifle at hand is better than none at all? Actually, this one... Yeah, we don't lose manpower that way. Uh, can we do any more raiding? Uh, raiding is really good. Bashu Kurdistan, maybe. Orenburg, even. Mm, that's interesting. Where are we at for this? 4.81 billion? Nice. 0.24 billion? Kind of sucks, but whatever. Full speed ahead. The Brotherhood has come far. Its factories split, a suit, spit suit and ash in defiance of the sun. Both its Untermesh and Aryans work without ceasing or pausing as the plants churn out waves upon waves of weaponry. No one is exempt from labor. No one escapes the watchful eye of the Brotherhood as it marches into its destiny. The obstructions are clear, and none stand in the way of the Brotherhood and our greatest triumph. Uh, before we do that, uh, we shall advance further. We shall expand the quotas, extend the work hours, and find more slaves to serve on the factory floors. No soldier in the front will ever lack for goods, guns, or, nor food. Far from being a crisis, the German departure has given us space to better ourselves as fellow Aryans. Now, from the HQ in Permheim, the Brotherhood looks over all of Russia and feel the blood in its veins hunger. It will not go long unsated. Euroleague again. They need treasure. They need treasure. Uh, they need treasure and some treasure. Ooh. Nice. Solidify control. Ah, uh, solidify control. We fear that uh, while we send our legions forth to bring us closer to the home in the Aryan utopia that is Germany, those we have subjugated have a tendency to forget about us, forget about the very beings who have brought the smallest degree of order and civilization to their pitiful lives. We must remind them who they are subservient to, the Aryan race. While many of our soldiers fighting on the front to bring us closer to salvation in the embrace of an unawaiting Deutschland, we need forces monitoring our, inferior, our interior to keep the lower castes loyal. Given uh, free reign to do so as they please to subjugate degenerates, they shall shoot, rape, and plunder as necessary. Anything here? Oh, Order St. George? Yes, please. We'll try a different group this time. Oh, so now we can do this. Wow. We're not even training anybody right now. 20 combo width. This would be really nice to do. Actually, how much motorized do we have? We have quite a bit of equipment too. We got a lot of guns. Honestly, let's train one. Because we're honestly going to need that. And train two if we can. Get ready. Yes. Order St. George. Oh. What's that? Oh, who cares? 
degenerates. All of them. Game? Okay, that's extraordinarily laggy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's right though. We're in Ghana. Come on. Full speed ahead, my friends. A lot resigns. Oh. Okay. Solidify control. And intensify the raids. From the sky, I used to fly bombs of all shapes and sizes, raining down destruction and destroying the civilization we have worked so hard to build from the pits of Slavic degeneracy. Over the past few weeks, this hellfire was slow, with far fewer landing on our fortunate area shelters and buildings. With less resources focused on rebuilding, it would seem that, that all the more men may be focused on intensifying our missions and territories not yet administered by ourselves. While well, the bombs no longer fall at home, they no longer keep our enemies as weak as we would like. While their racial degeneracy is incurable, we must strike now before they are able to build back up their resources to muster up a defense. Their people will learn to fear the Brotherhood. And soon learn to call us their master. We don't have any manpower, but we do have quite a few guns. And anti-tank is not bad. Support equipment is not great. I would like to get some engineers here as well. Yeah. We'll wait just a little bit. Alright, see what they say? Please, please, please let us raid you. Oh, come on! Well, let someone else try to raid us then. Because I'm saving our political power for any core stuff, so... These are positive on stability, though. Even though we really, 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 really need more power grids. Holy crap. Prisons, not bad. Building an army base as well. Solidify controls, good. Intensify the raids. Anything here yet? Oh, yes. Slightly better on the debt. Yes, I love the rating. Status report. A community key from the Geheimstatspolizei. State Secret Intelligence Department. Delivered to a unit redacted at 1964.3.18.1. This is an official message to all officers of the Brotherhood unit redacted. In regards to the recent shift on military policy by our le leader, Gutschum Wagner, on redacted, the degenerate Slav and Mongol populations of lands recently purged of their vile influence proved disloyal and breed instability. The destruction of such subservience elements is of the utmost importance. Previous terror campaigns of the Untermensch have proven ineffective at mitigating the rebellious spark and spirit. This has been deemed by redacted to be cause of the lack of reach and poor execution of previous campaigns by official order of the Geheimstatspolizei. All villages must have 50% of their men, 25% of their women, and 25% of all children liquidated upon contact. The use of rape, plunder, and pillage as weapons of terror is both authorized and mandated. All these quotas may be raised in accordance to the local conditions. This may not be lowered. Stay ever vigilant as you protect area interests in the interior. Heil, Feuer, Wagner. Heil, Feuer, Wagner. Great. And schools, workers, or agricultural methods. Uh, basic literacy, huh? Ooh. Schools? Probably honestly schools then. Let's, let's, let's get schools that going this way too. I want everything to go at least slightly every single month. Slightly. Not by much, but slightly. Take, in, take from the unworthy. Across the vast domain ruled over by the Brotherhood, there's not as much to go around as we would like. There exists Slavs in our nation, with more resources than the Aryans who own large tracts of land and hoard resources bear their purpose for the civilizing masters. We must correct this with force. The patrols of Brotherhood forces, who keep on ever a vigilant watch over the Untermensch, with no ability to watch over themselves, shall undertake these redistributive actions across Brotherhood territory, taking from the unworthy and giving to the superior. In this way, we prioritize the more important lives of our Aryans and keep the Slavs and other inferior races in their natural inferior positions. You know, I'm read the next focus too. We're gonna read about the aftermath in a little bit. The hooked cross advances. What is what has held the Eurasian plane back for so long has been the expector of racial inferiority. Slavic men, weak and unable to keep order in their own homes, destroy their own nation from the inside, and now we find ourselves Aryans, the progenitors of civilization, forced to clean up this mess they have left. And what a mess it is! Across the former Soviet Union lie feudal chiefdoms, which wish only to bring us back to the Dark Ages and destroy Aryan civilization. It is our job as a superior race to mobilize in defense of the civilization that Aryans work to build and Slavs work harder to destroy. If we are true in our label of Aryan, there will be no difficulty and the advance of our black ranks will be the unstoppable force to finally civilize Russia and reunite with our rightful Aryan brethren. The Aftermath. Oh, 0.1 billion. Nice, that really helped us out there too. Keep boosting up our GDP though. The fire smelled of burning wood and spilt blood, a smell that had become all too common in these parts of Russia, in this particular village. A close-knit community where everyone's happenings were known by all. When those draped in black coats with no souls behind cold eyes came to take, they took their time. The men were shot, some of the women too, in barely two hours, almost three-quarters of the town lay dead in pits. 
The signs have been there for months. Rumors from travelers told of the retreat. They know the fall of their old protector. The terrifying stories came soon after of beasts of men who came to kill with bloodlust in their minds, not loot or pillage. Stories of hundreds dead in towns of less than a thousand. The rest barely alive themselves. Many dismissed them as rumors, rural legends, until the waves of refugees came straggling down dirt roads clogged with mud. Those who could leave did, or at least try, but most had no choice but to stay to hope their fate would be different. Naive, yes, but hope is the most <clears throat> reassuring liar. Every night they lay in their beds with dread filling their heads, telling them there was some still some time to leave on the next refugee train to find salvation in some other poor corner of Russia. Few did. Now, only the odd stone building or stretch of loose soil marked what used to be a bustling community. I love all the uh, army XP we're getting. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Someone please try to raid us. Please try to raid us. Oh, we need a trainer, guys, too. But no one's going to raid us if we have no loot, so. Yeah, that's not going to be easy. If, and if we can't do well against some of these guys, then we'll just do some funky stuff off screen and make sure that we can do better. Oh, South Asian Economic Conference. So look at that. Nice. US FIP United Philippines. Good job. The people rejoice in the freedom. Good job, guys. Good job. Cold War. Don't really care about that too much, honestly. Oh, did our GDP go down? It was used to be 0.81 billion. Oh, it goes up, 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 and go back down. Revenue is slightly better than before, which is good. Oh, anti tank as well. Oh, would you look at that? 0.2? Nice. Yeah, it's not going up by very much, but that's fine. Whatever. It goes up, 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 and goes further and further down. Nice. Very good. Good. Conquest without end. Impressive, though our territory may be, we must press on. As our path of conquest advances ever closer to the beacon of Aryan light that is in the Rex Commissariat, we must remember our cause and that there is no end to the machine of the Aryan Brotherhood. These initial conquests shall prove only a stepping stone in our quest to reach our fellow Aryans and bring back together our kindred spirits. The brave soldiers of our Brotherhood shall thus press forward, forward into the den of uncivilized Slavic destruction, where our civilizing grip will be the only way forward for these pitiful, disgusting creatures. We've proven our racial superiority in our conquests, and of uh, previous Untermension, a fact, uh, we will hold high as our enlightened warriors crush their pitiful resistance. Heil Feuer Wagner! Absolutely. I want to do it so badly, but we got to keep the political power here just in case to core. we got to make sure we can core stuff. Uh, Schultz in the spotlight. Tonight's speaker. May be a newcomer to Permheim, but don't let that fool you. He's a man boundlessly talented and brimming with ideas. And he has graciously enlightened, agreed to enlighten us with his ruminations on the people's true history. Please welcome Siegfried Schultz to the stage. The Association for the Preservation of Aryan Culture was a niche club, but its reputation for producing excellent ideologues made it closely watched by the Aryan elite. Evidently, Schultz knew this fact well, for he stopped there on his speaking tour just weeks after his arrival. After thanking the announcer, he took to the podium and spoke with an intensity, unusual even for Permheim's hardliners. Brothers, Aryans, fellow members of the Master Race. You have been lied to. The Zionist and his endless trickery has infiltrated even those nations that profess Aryan values, bending them inextricably towards his will. The Third Reich is but a tool by which the judeo masonic conspiracy directs the populace to a false racial consciousness, leaving the leaders untouched. Do not be fooled. The true Fuhrer of Germany is a Jew, and only the slavo aryan master race has the capability to overturn this tyranny, his tyranny, and free its homeland once and for all. Schultz ranted in such a manner for some time, evoking confusion and fascination in equal measure from the crowd. One audience member, a secret representative of the foyer, contemplated in silence. Schultz's theories were unusual, but his zeal was impressive. Perhaps he could be of use to the Brotherhood. Maybe just a man? This man may just be the genius of her time. Germany controlled by the Jews? Is he insane? Mm -hmm. On the warpath. The birds chirped, the men yawned, and the sun rose over the small and self-enclosed village that marked the end of the Russian land and the beginning of the Black Scourge. The village itself had months before been turned into a watch post where men pressed into service, watched fearfully from the scam bags and towers, hoping nothing more than another day without the sighting of another black devil. It had been days since the last raid on this part of the border, and the men had found themselves in a state of uneasy comfort, weary to entertain the idea of peace. One man, the commanding officer of this outpost, knew better than to even let himself feel at home. Scarcely sleeping, his energy, dark bags under his eyes, and his slim physique had given him the nickname of the Night Bat, one he wore with pride as a testament to his service. On this specific dawn, the bat, having been awake since, oh, 200 hours that morning, he had been inspecting a ridge with some of his comrades, men born and raised in the village proper, one of the last villages left after the rest were abandoned or raised. Looking out across the nor into the horizon, into a great valley with a forest on the other side, he swore he could see some movement, subtle perhaps, but his tired mind thought little of it. 
Only minutes later, he now stood alone. The thought he had early caught his attention, and he looked back across, out across a plain and saw a great banner. He rubbed his eyes and looking again, it was now followed by a mass of black-clad men rushing back to camp. The men knew, without him saying, the peace was over, and they were here. Nothing good can last. Our conquest of Russia shall begin. Operation Skin Foxy. Uh, our proud, the proud Aryan people have always faced persecution at the hands of Eastern oppressors carrying the sword of Islam. In Bashkiria, history repeats itself. The Russians, some of the valuable, some of valuable genetic stock, languish under the rule of the imams. It is our duty as Aryans to clear all things foreign out and expand the frontiers of our ethnos, just as our ancestors have done for centuries. Integrate the Russians, threaten the imams. Hmm. The Bashkirs could not stand up to the fierce and noble assault of the superior people, of a superior people, us. And they fell quickly. They will be dealt with shortly, turning our attention to the Russians of Bashkiria. It's clear that we need to begin sorting the wheat from the chaff. <clears throat> there are people of valuable stock here, but their racial awareness has been hampered by a common cause with the subhuman Slavs against Bashkir oppression. This falsehood will be dispelled and a proper hierarchy established. And I wanted to pause it just because we don't have these guys on the line anymore here. Ooh. Subhadras Chandraboza? Oh. A lot of people are dying left and right, but what else is new? What do we have for compliance here? Five percent. That sucks. That's really sucky. Um, over here, thirty-two point four percent. Not bad. Point eight. It just it actually did it go down at all? It might have gone down a little bit. Man, that sucks. Oh well, we will deal with it. Aryans will deal with it. Good, good. Not bad. We got a lot of. How much do we have? We just have one thing on anti-tank. Yeah, one, two, three. We are lacking some severe grid power here, which sucks. Can we actually go in and do well here? They're helping out. It is over river, which does suck, but if they attack us. That's fine with us. What if we attack them and just force the attack? Should be able to push in here, right? Should definitely be able to push in here. Nice. Good. Fighting over the rivers always suck. I mean, we've lost none. Well, we'll see when we're done here. Let's go there. That's fine. 37. Not bad. We get 3,400. Not bad. We got him. There we go. Integrate immediately. Scavenge for loot. Uh, Vyaka. No, thank you. They need some loot. Actually, do we have... We're in the bigger board with them now. But, integrate the Russians. We lose a little bit of stability, but that's okay. Ah, uh, threaten the Imams. Despite the humiliation at her hands, the Bashkir scum refused to know their place. The religious teachers have been especially active, organizing underground resistance against their new order. We have conquered this land, making us its rightful overlords. Their ways and their god no longer have power here. A coordinated terror campaign against Muslim religion and its leaders should make that very, 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 very clear. Oh, Peron's back! What the heck is going on in South, South America? I was about to say South Africa, but South America. Um, Zataus, Ornberg, Samara. Just in case. If I could get Samara like immediately, I would love to do that. That or Vyatka. I honestly Samara. I, I want to kill off Samara as fast as possible. I hate fighting these guys. That's gonna piss me off too, probably too. The Paraguayan Bush War, nice. Anything else here? No, no. Point nine billion. No more fuel there. Bashkiria. Warrior development. Vyatka. Yeah, not much else there. The Bashkirs pacified. It's taken blood and toil, but the Bashkirs appear to be under control. Their race and their religion no longer hold sway, and they have even been relegated to a position below even the worst Russians. Their mosques have been become meeting places and trial centers for the Brotherhood, and many of their properties have already been expropriated and given to those of more deserving blood. With time, Bashkiria may become a prominent, promising part of our realm, just as the eastern territories are to the Reich far to our west. We'll return to the status quo for this one. Very good. We lose a little bit of stability, a little bit of political power, but. This is why we save it just in case. Just in case. Um, the reactors, efficiency, prisons, coverage, policies. Steel consumption goes up, which I don't necessarily like. Um, I'll put, I prefer this one. This one on the right is just better overall. But we don't have the industry for it yet to really research all that stuff, so get some better artillery first. We'll see. Oh, they do have loot, but they've been raided in the past 90 days, which means we should be able to raid them as fast as we possibly can. Let's at least hope so. And this is one more day left, which is fine. Nice. There goes Tricky Dick. Oh, they're getting raided right now. That sucks. Alright, so we could do Vyaka, maybe. How strong are they? 
Yeah, they're looking pretty strong. I'm not going to lie. That looks pretty flippin' strong. We're not going to attack them then. Euro League. Ornberg? Is it possible for us to take out Ornberg like this? Mm. I'm not doing Euro League. No, 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 no. Maybe Ornberg, though. Operation Odin. At first glance, the white Russian reactionaries may appear to be have common ground with the Brotherhood. Neith nothing could be more false. They embrace our primitive and Asiatic past. We embrace our Aryan heritage and our future ruling alongside the Germans. And before we do that, let's keep the Ornberg. Enviak, a member of the cadet branch of the degenerate and depraved Romanovs who presided over centuries of squalor and race ignor ignorance, desires to revive the power of the erected bloodline. Nothing could prove our superiority more than a slaughtering the symbol of Slavic filth. Good. We have one equipment. Anything else here? Almost a billion. Night vision for more land out attack. Good. Get more defense and breakthrough. That's also very good. Oh, they clearly weren't Order St. George. Okay, so we need to raid these guys. They should... We should be able to beat them up. They don't look that strong, right? Should be paid great. I return to the status quo. Life. It had always been difficult for Gawar Mustafin. Her mother gave birth to her on June 22nd, 1941. Her birthday became a bad omen that would loom over the rest of her life. When she was only two years old, her father and two other her brothers died fighting against the Germans within the space of a week. A few years after that, her mother left the house one night and never returned. Her older sister took care of her until she was old enough to make her own way. Then she had gone from town to town seeking work. Even in the anarchy of the post-war years, the Russians refused to hire a Bashkir girl like her for anything more than working on their farms or in the stables. It didn't matter that Russia was gone, the Russians were still the rulers, and the Bashkirs theirs to rule. The first real hope of Gawar had felt in nearly a decade came at a time of great despair for the Russians. The West Russian Revolutionary Front had collapsed into infighting, and during that collapse, her, her people seized a chance for freedom. The Bashkirs had reclaimed their homeland, of course, and forced all Russians who remained to accept that their new status as equals, not superiors. Their people were of different faiths, different cultures, and different histories. It was clear that many of the Russians resented losing what small sense of superiority they still had, but that didn't matter. Bashkiria was free. It was not meant to last, of course. For a time, Gawar had thought her curse had finally broken, but before long, the invaders came. They overran Bashkiria, crushing it in its infancy. The new rulers claimed that they were not Russians. In fact, they claimed to hate the Russians almost as much as they hated the Bashkirs. But they looked like Russians, and they acted like Russians, and they spoke Russian. It didn't matter to Gawahar whether they called themselves Aryan or not. Some things never really do change. Yeah, we gotta get more integration too. Four? Holy crap. We're building grid power consumption stuff. Oh my goodness. That's pretty bad. Confiscate the distillery and Aryan arsenal. The so-called Tsar and his followers, originally made up of the White Russians' exiles, were inserted back into Russia by the Germans in order to help fight the West Russian Revolutionary Front, and then received a large stockpile of firearms to assist them in that task. Giving guns to such poor stock seems uncharacteristically foolish for the Reich, but as we all know too well, the Germans are wise beyond measure, and we do do everything with a purpose. Now that we have toppled Vyaka, that purpose is also clear, to give the local followers, loyal followers of the Aryan race, the weapons that they need to seize their birthright. Yeah, four, that's not good, man. That is not good. Not ideal, man. The Brotherhood needs new blood. The future of the Aryan race depends on renewal. As the weeks go by, the failure knows that the Untermensch have become complacent and arrogant, descending into degeneracy and Jewry as the older brothers fail to beat them hard enough. As its control over the Reich slips, the Brotherhood must restore itself through blood. By organizing another right of ascension, bringing into the new fold men to induct into the Aryan race, we shall cause the Untermensch to cower in terror and solidify our own power. To fail to participate in this periodic renewal will see us for the weekend, inevitably succumbing in future at the hands of uh, Aryan betters. The ascension shall be a violent one. To complete it, hundreds of men, women, and children of the Slavic race must be killed by our inducted brothers. Their cries of pain and fear, the misery of weakness and death, can only be borne by the most ruthless murders we find. Those who fail the task will die in turn. Oh boy. Um, how do we get rid of that? Because that's really bad for us. Alright, so they've conquered them. Whatever. Where is the right of ascension? Who's trying to kill us? Yaka? Nice. So, not, so we don't know if this is going to go really well for us. It might not. It might go very, very, very well for us. I want you guys to go right there. There, 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 there. And circle them if you can. Um, do that for now first as well. Let them come in. Don't lose Premheim and we'll be okay. In theory.
If we can circle these two divisions, we'll probably win the war pretty easily, so. They have a lot of divisions. It's not ideal. There you go. We got one going there already. We got one, two going up there as well. That should be pretty good. Kennedy's been assassinated, but that's pretty normal. Hold. Um, as long as we get these guys down, that's all I care about. Get in there. No, no, no. How many divisions do they have? 15? Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. You go, go back this way. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We captured the plan. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Nice. Good stuff. What matters is that we encircle and kill off right now. All that matters is we kill them off. Go in here. Oh, we lost Hitler Heim. Bro, that sucks. Keep him in place. There you go. That's better. Kill them off. Kill them off. Kill them off. Kill them off. How are you losing here? Especially when they're completely cut off. Force it. Good. Get back on the line. Honestly, you might just be able to take Vyatka. You might not, but we can try it. We can risk it. Hit Permheim? Please don't lose Permheim. Which you probably shouldn't, but still, you never know. Still slowly losing here. Causing one big old distraction if possible. See what happens? Igria? There you go. Come back over here and take all this stuff. We took Vyatka, good. Now go on the offensive. Oh, do we win? Darn it, it wasn't us. It's fine. We have 63 guys in reserve. We have negative 19 stability. Not good, not good. Uh, where's the right of ascension? They've got to have lost more guys than us, though, right? <sighs> Just get us a glass off. That's all that matters. You might be able to make it there, maybe. Don't lose the capital, though. Oh, my God. Don't lose the capital, you ding-dongs. My God, is this a mess. Yes, hold. Don't attack. Oh my god, you stupid idiots. Don't attack. Don't attack there. Oh my god. I'm going to press H. They still want to attack. Why? Actually, take that. Take that. You might be able to risk it to get it. Maybe. Hold. I really got Vyaka back. That sucks. This is stupid. I, I know this is going to be difficult anyways, but like, I, it's just... It's so stupid sometimes, I swear to god. It's so stupid. Cut him off from the capital. That's good. We lost a division. Oh my god, we lost a division. We cannot afford to lose a division. Jesus flipping Christ. You know what? Force the attack. If you, you should be able to win easily on attack. With plus 20%, this, this nation needs more, like, buffs. It really needs more buffs. Because they're just not strong enough to do anything here. Yeah, I might just go back and replay this off screen. Just because this is so bad. This is god awful. You should easily be able to. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. But we've lost way too many, too many men for this. But I'll read this off. Because you can't lose this many men. Like, that's ridiculous. The Aryan Brotherhood needs a slightly more of a buff. This is my opinion. But at least my opinion. Who am I? I'm not the devs. It appears that the Tsar is out of side business. Before our annexation of Vyaka into the Reich, the monarch's cronies ran a large distillery that funneled liquor throughout Western Russia, making a tidy profit in the process. Despite their inferiority, they might have been on to something. Their distillery is profitable, and there's reason to, that we cannot use it. Uh, no reason we can't use it for the same purposes. Consumption of alcoholic beverages is a long-time Aryan tradition, after all. And all the better if we raise some badly needed revenue off of it. And then the Tsar's whole destroy. The Asiatic Slavic hordes, led by insipid and weak Romanov family, were never able to hold a candle to the might of the Aryan warriors, as evidenced by the collapse in the First World War, not so long after ago. Now history repeats itself. The Brotherhood has taken capital of the Imperial Restoration and shattered it in the name of the Germanic peoples. We have conclusively proven the worthlessness of the Romanov bloodline. A two-headed eagle has been torn down from the sky. 
With the majestic eagle of the Reich triumphantly ascending to replace it. The end of the Romanovs. For the second time this century, the enemies of the Romanovs, the true last monarchs of Europe, have scattered the dynasty of the winds. While the first collapse was inevitable, for a time it appeared that the anarchy that followed the West Russian War might give them a chance to reclaim their birthright. Under Vladimir Karelovich's guidance, they claimed part of their homeland for themselves and prepared to reunite the lands of Russia under the divine rule of the Tsar, but it was not meant to be, thank God. The monarchists and the white Russian officers serving under the new Tsar had spent years preparing themselves for second confrontation with the communists to the north, a rematch between royalty and Bolshevism that would decide the fate of Russia once and for all. None of them could have guessed that their defeat would come from the south, not the north, at the hands of a far viler enemy than the communists. The Aryan Brotherhood had resolved to do what the cowardly weak Soviets could not and finish off that filthy Slavic monarchy that had returned to deny the Aryans their own, their own birthright. The two sides clashed in a vicious struggle, but in the end it was a brotherhood that was proven correct as their armies overran the Tsar's intervention and rampaged across the fields of central Russia, now memories of the brief Romanov revival already fading. The Brotherhood's victory reduced what might have been the rebirth of a great empire to a historical footnote and place of the failed dynasty. A new master is, of the East is rising, not defined by faith and tradition, but by race and violence. Aryan soldiers have burned and defaced the imperial portraits. They've melted the crown jewels down for their gold, for the gold. In place of their old flag of the empire, the swastika now flies over Vyatka. The empire died in 1917. Their brother made sure it stayed dead. Now, we have a little bit of empire now. We have to record a couple things here and there. Um, actually, that was because we recorded, uh, I think, Permine down here too. Or not Permine, but, you know, this group here. Which is not a lot of manpower, but you know what? I'll take whatever manpower we... We're actually mobilizing more. Look at that. Okay. Um, but, yeah, honestly, like, the bus we get for this is not good enough. 20% more attack is not good enough. Honestly, I think if we're going full area, maybe less attack but more organization would be better because that helps a lot with defense as well. I mean, we're not really focused too much on defense, but at the same time, I mean, yeah, we're raiding bands and we're not, like, super, super Spartan discipline here, but, like, 20% attack is nothing. It's literally not enough for our divisions. So, I know we're not really supposed to win here, but at the same time, it's, it's not enough. It's just not enough. But, Purge Priests... Although we've torn the order asunder, the people still cling to their ridiculous faith. Internal investigation has revealed that there are still some Orthodox priests who managed to evade our initial purges, and they still remain among, the, uh, remain among the people, spreading their vile faith among the lower castes. I say that we finish what we've started and show the people of Gaini that the Christian God is too weak to protect them in their time of need. Only the Aryan conqueror can shape the world according to his own whims. Ooh, and actually, since we're going to do that anyways, uh, do that. There you go. Also, uh, all this other stuff, like, after we did the Tsar's whole destroyed, this is auto bypass. So, if you want to re read these, please go right ahead. Tartar stand, sweep the plains, elevate the Tartars, Tartars, put on the bridles, uh, Operation Yogmungandar, Operation Bifrust, Arianize the cathedral, crush the partisans, their obedience ensured, and modify the crosses. The widespread use of the cross as a symbol among Christians is proof of their weakness. How else could one idolize their faith's founder meekly allowing himself to die? The cross is common among Gaini when we must stamp its use out and replace it with our acts of our own iconography. Iconography. The swastika, the hooked cross, is a sign of the only faith that can truly exist, utmost belief in the racial superiority of the Aryan over all other peoples. Pay the debt off. That's why we're all the way up here, too. So, luckily, Yaka did take them out, but it's just... This nation is... It is special. It is very special. That's all I'm going to say. It's frustratingly special. Um, but the prayers ignore. Gainey's cathedrals lie in ruins, and the primacy of the Aryan race remains unchallenged. The order has been shattered, and its priests hunted down and slaughtered. Unshackled by the foolishness of a faith that preaches kindness, those worthy residents of Gainey can at last discover their true potential. And the Christian God is indeed real. He has smiled upon us, the glorious harbingers of a new age. Yes, please. We lose some stability. Slightly increases the effectiveness of uh, um, religious rites. Which is okay. Integrate, integrate, integrate. Yeah, getting this support is super, super important. Anything here? Not a, no. Komi's doing okay. Komi's doing really well, though. Who are they led by? Kosujin. Did I place Kosujin before? I might have. Tukicheski's up there. Modify the crosses. Very nice. The prayer is ignored, though. And Operation Nidhogg, we're going to go to war with Samar as fast as possible. The Germans relied on a number of Russian allies to destroy the Soviet Union and its West Russian successor state. The most prominent of these, the Russian Liberation Army, are headquartered in the city of Samara. The ROA has strayed from the Reich's guidance in recent times, and now seems to desire the reunification of a decidedly non-Aryan Russia. If we're to prove ourselves as the most loyal servants of Germany, we must act quickly to destroy these disgusting traitors. Absolutely. Which, Samara, how are they doing? Led by Vlasov, of course. These guys have, are just, they have no factories. Because we only have three power grid, and we have 16 production units, which is not good for us. We have nine divisions, not bad. But this nation's a god awful nation to kill off to. I hate fighting West Russia so much. And also, also, I think there's a WRF. I really fight 
I hate fighting here because it's so difficult sometimes. Maybe it's for Samar. Samar might not be too bad. But, standing in the bombed out shell of a church, Hans found himself in an unusually philosophical mood. In his hands, he held an old Bible he had been flipping through the while Gunther and Johann searched for the ruins for any valuables. He opened it up a random page and found a passage that stood out to him. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession, out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 7 6. The passage left him conflicted. His parents raised him as a Christian, of course. They also raised him as a degenerative slob. So that wasn't saying much. Their brother was not explicitly anti-Christian so much as against non-Aryan beliefs. The recent war to crush the order certainly exemplified the way that policy would lead to highly anti-Christian behavior. Heck, Ponzo participated in his fair share of sacrilege both during and after the fighting, but this passage had him questioning that. Maybe Christianity and the Brotherhood's beliefs were not so different. Maybe the Aryans were God's favorite people, a noble race of holy warriors he had sent to reclaim the world and destroy the false prophets who claimed to represent him. Maybe, hey, bookworm, quit reading and give us an effing hand for once. Hans looked up and saw Gunther and Johann trying to pull a large chest from where it was wedged under the rubble. He dropped the Bible into the dirt and went to help his brothers loot the church, a fine specimen of God's chosen people. That is one retain the loyal. Uh, Operation Simper, we have to be a peace for this one. Caesar aid, retain the loyal would be pretty nice. Uh, retain the loyal. Among the ROA, there remains those who never stopped obeying the will of Germany, even as their Slavic leadership succumbed to their racial instincts and became increasingly corrupt and self-motivated. These loyalists at first had exposure to the glory of the German National Socialism, and are eager to continue working for a Germanic future. They will be able to retain their prior posts, provided they meet our racial standards and loyalty tests. Also, off-screen, I uh, redid it, and we did get the right of Ascension thing again, which was really nice to get rid of that debuff, but yeah. This nation, not easy to play. I cannot recommend this nation, just because it's pretty difficult. But yeah, area control extreme, pretty nice. Uh, how close are we to core in this group? Uh, more than a month out. Oh my gosh. That takes so flipping long. It's ridiculous. Fry inaugurated? Alright. Yeah, these guys are not going to be easy either. Jesus Christ. But I did improve these guys just a wee bit. And we do have a little bit more uh, strength now. A little more manpower. It's always good to have... Core. Oh, we actually have the motorized out. Good. Good. Operation Nidhogg. What do we have here? Um, I get to. Honestly, if you want to move fast enough and go right there, that's. No, you piece of garbage. Stop attacking. Stop. Jesus Christ. Ugh. And it's so irksome sometimes. You tell them to stop attacking, they're like, nope. I'm just going to keep attacking because I feel like it. And that's not a TNO thing, that's just a Holy Four thing in general. If you can move fast enough, go in there, 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 there. You cut them all off. And that is a goal. I'm not too worried about this division either. No, you ding dong, go right there. Ah, the AI is so, so stupid. That's not a TNO thing either. It just it is what it is. Bro, can you move over, please? Thank you. How did the infantry get over here faster than... Ah, it must be a lot, very muddy around here. Just go straight for there. Go straight there. Oh, look, it is recommend. That's actually not too bad. See, I'm okay with this. Kill them off. Feel really good about that. Anything else around here? No, that's fine. Kazan would be good as well. At least we killed some of them off. We have nine divisions now. Yeah, I, I'm not going to tolerate like just us losing divisions all willy-nilly because the AI wanted us to. So, sometimes you just got to replay things off-screen. It's just, it's so annoying sometimes. Oh, I guess we're down here too. Uh, Kazan. Oh, hello. What? What are you taking so long to get over there for? What's the point of motorized if you take forever, man? Well, if you go in there. Thank you. Thank God. That's a, this, is, this is a lot better than it was with the other nation. Jesus Christ, do I hate fighting West Russia. It's one of my least favorite things at TNO. I'd rather play uh, the South African War. Then again, I haven't played it since the update, but still. Actually, just go right there, there. This motorized is sucky. You know what? Either win or die. You have two choices. Win or die, and that's it. But, we got the factory. If you worry about that, please go ahead. Thank you. And this is why we keep uh, this. Um, fair rate. Ornberg, yeah, why not? Do that. Three. And we can't quite scavenge for loot, but I don't care at this point. I really don't. Samara was actually... This is the easiest time we've taken out Samara. We're taking the loyal. And Caesar A. The Germans continued sending large amounts of aid into Samara, even as the ROA deviated from the path of the Aryan race. This may seem in contradiction to their mission, but we know better. This can only mean that the Reich recognized the racial vigor of some present and sought to assist them. They will surely not, uh, not object now that a more viable Aryan organization has seized control of their premises. A stockpile of German arms and equipment will bring our fighting force that much closer to the genuine Wehrmacht. Hello, Harold Wilson. Hello, hello. Scam for loot next, yes. Raid, if you possibly can. 
and embrace a fascist. So the ROA was, despite its initial allegiance into the Reich, primarily a nationalist organization commandeered by Slavs, and compatible with our dreams of Aryan, Aryan Russia. This does not mean that every member was necessarily a Slav, based on their testimonies. We believe several officers from the more extreme factions who have been Aryans attracted by a noble love for Germany rather than an opportunistic desire to gain power. Well, the vast majority of the ROA does not meet the criterion. Those that do will make valuable local administrators and provide a sense of continu continuity. Moving into the Reich. Bomb them harder, faster, and deeper. Oh, well, that's actually really bad. Inflation is super high. Ooh, that's not good. That's actually really, really bad. Why is inflation so high? Um, we could always move it down to uh, counter pennies. Up to a 3% reduction. Um, but that wouldn't really be worth it right now. That's still pretty high. Maybe give it a month. We'll see what happens. Yeah, that's fine. Do that too. Oh, where are the divisions? Hello. Ganey? Orenberg? 2 to 4? Yeah, that's not bad. I don't mind rating these guys. Raid them until they literally all die. I want their blood on our hands. I hate every single one of these enemies we have to fight here. Oh, good. Well, embrace the fascists, and then uh, Comey's next. Even though, honestly, if these guys can win against the WRF, I will be honestly relatively happy. Like, I don't want to fight them if we don't have to, so. Actually, go over here. Not bad. Less than 10%. Pretty good. Operation Sipner. Democracy is a system unfit to exist. Allowing the impure masses to rule will inevitably lead them to steer the state into ruin. There is no clear example of this in the Komi Republic. One of the, Russia's most turbulent states is democratic leadership, beleaguered by the Bolsheviks and nationalists of various stripes alike, has completely failed to hold Siktivkar together. Marching our Aryan armies through such a limp and incapable state will be simple. It's time for us to put this pathetic experiment down and show the peoples of the Republic their place. Nice. Now we can scan for more loot, which would be good. Can we actually pay off the debt? Oh, we're close. 7%. Uh, more growth, honestly. Uh, we're going to max this out as much as we can. If we do, like, max this out. Oh, wait, we actually have a surplus. Holy crap. With a surplus, we don't get any more growth here. Um. So there's no point. Well, I mean, there's no point to do this. Because if you do it like this, you still get more uh, army research speed. Better, you know, upkeep maybe. Honestly, I don't mind doing that then. Uh, more monthly army military professionalism is what we want as well, so that'd be good. Yeah, I don't want I don't want to fight these guys. We will not fight these guys if, if we have to. Embrace the fascists, yes. A member of the master race. Please win. Oh my god, if Komi can beat these guys, I will be impressed. And then we'll kill them. But I'll still be impressed regardless. <sighs> Nothing like embracing fascists. And everything else? <clears throat> A member of the master race. As he sat in a prison camp outside Samara, Yakov Becker thought back to the day he knew his life was over. It had been four months ago, the, the, uh, the day his unit received their new orders. They were being sent across the border to the Reich, other Reich, to help train the soldiers of some warlord in Samara the Wehrmacht was propping up. Many of the soldiers, Yakov among them, felt a sense of impending doom with the news. Somehow he knew he would never see Cologne again, never make the triumphant return home he had dreamed of making. His fears had proved incorrect when the warlord Sato was attacked by some other band horde. The armies of Samara went to battle, and Jakob and his fellow advisors went with them. Their presence made no difference. These invaders knew fl that flew the Swaska for some incomprehensible reason had crushed the well-cooked but poorly led soldiers of Samara, with and within a few weeks of the conflict start, Jakob had been captured and taken to the prison where he currently swallowed. He was snapped out of his self-pity. We noticed a, pers a person prison guard approaching, followed by a man dressed in an ill-fitting Wehrmacht u officer's uniform from the last war. The guard pointed at him, and the officer stepped forward. Are you a German? He asked in a halting, heavily accented German. Jakob hesitated before answering. Yes, why? The officer's face broke out in a huge grin. Oh, this is great. Please follow me. I'm so sorry about the confusion. I want you to know we would never keep an Aryan in prison intentionally, especially then with the Untermensch. Where are we going, Jakob asked in confusion. To my quarters. I'll give you a chance to clean up and eat a proper meal first after that. I want to introduce you to all the other Brotherhood members here. None of us have ever met a German before. Things might be looking up for once. Wow. Wow, we have a lot more equipment now. Not bad. We want to get some anti-air, some APCs. Do we have any tanks? Main battle tanks? There you go. Um, honestly, I want more. Oh, do we not have... Oh my gosh, we don't even have planes. My bad. I forgot about planes. Transports. There we go. Stack them up. If, if, if they can take uh, our Hongols, please. I, They're out of manpower. They have 56,000 manpower left. 9 to 15. I, I you know what? I'd rather just let time go on. I'd rather... I'd, 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 just let time go on. I don't want to fight Komi. 
I don't want to fight these guys, so. Did they lose Sictacar? Oh, they did. Oof. And no matter who wins here, they're going to lose, hopefully. Hopefully. Those guys, you guys are losing now, definitely. Come on, can someone just kill each other off? They're out of manpower. They have one factory. They have no factories at sixty-one thousand manpower. Point five nine, so plus four point six percent. You could raise a credit rating. Come on, just kill them off here. Or, uh, they might already be dead there. The shield broken. Of course, it's 65. Oh, we made another division too, so that's going to hurt our budget a little bit. It's fine, whatever. Army expenditure is so high. We'll, we'll edit these divisions too eventually as well. Uh, go schools. Go schools. We hit our 0 0.02 billion. Not bad. 8.2%. Not great, but not bad. Someone die here, please. And if these guys actually win, then they have so much manpower they have to lose just to like pour everything here. So, <sighs> come on. Industrial equipment is looking pretty good though. An equal amount. Oh, we have 11 divisions now too. It's very nice. Metric in Turkey is fine. Come on, just take Archangels. That's probably all you need. That and Onega. Are there still corning stuff here? Yeah, we're still going. So, I mean, even if we don't go to war, we still have no manpower. So, we actually have a deficit now again. That sucks. Our GDP just shot up. More real growth. Good. Inflation is 2%. That's not great. It is what it is. Uh, actually, what if we just max lower this? 0 0.69. 0 0.15. Is that great? Not really, but whatever. We can try it like that now. Bro, you cut off a capital. Please, just kill off the divisions. How much more equipment do we have? 61 army speed. We're going to make 40 combo with tanks. Or, or infantry after this as well. Do we have any planes? No, we don't have any planes because we have no manpower. So we do that. We still have no manpower. And we still have no manpower. God dang it. Oh, oh come on. Thirteen's better than what we had before, though. But after this, um, honestly, we should probably just make some other stuff here. Such as, what is this? Thermo nuclear stuff? Nuclear reactor? Thermoelectric plant. Yeah, let's make one of these because we can really use it immediately. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we can really use that. Power's getting worse, though. Bro, just take... You got it all the way up here. These guys should be... Oh, they got it. They got it. All right. We're going to go in next. Operation the same bar. There you go. Free Aryan prisoners. While it existed, the Komi Republic served as a petri dish for every conceivable mode of thought. Most of these ideologies were in the inane prattle of weaker minds, but some are pearls in the mud. Among the former rightist coalition are people of clear racial value, locked away by vermin unable to perceive that they were persecuting their betters. All it will take is to liberate these men and remind them of their racial consciousnesses. And we will have local area administrators who understand the region and its myriad political complexities. Go completely and just kill every last one of them off. Oh, the brother needs blood. We're going to do this, please go ahead. This is a really crappy one to have. Why do you take so long to cross? You are worthless. Motorized is absolutely worthless, man. I'm not going to on this one yet. It's so bad for us. It's so bad. Uh, they're up to 14 divisions. Maybe a little bit more than us. Um, I'll come out here. The more damage you can do, the better. Let's go there. Because this is not a core of theirs. No, they're out of map. They're completely out of map, which is nice. Uh, anything here yet? Surplus. Keep paying off the debt for now, and then we're going to upgrade ourselves. Nice. Excuse me. You should be able to win pretty easily here. Ah, they do those guys too. That's good. Good for them. Yeah, don't do that. There you go. Anything else here? Scan for loot? Sure, why not? Sictive car cast arsenal, nice, not bad. Go here, here. Can you just move fast through here, you pieces of garbage motorized? Production units. Oh, do we have extra production units now? 
Care pizza we're good to now go here. Two, three. There you go. There you go, not bad. Not bad. Right of ascension, yeah, do that one immediately. Ah! Whoa! Whoa! That's a lot more manpower. Nice. Very nice. Oh my god, you got encircled, you pieces of garbage. I hate I hate this so much. Force the attack if you have to. And try to escape. This is so stupid. Come on, stop lagging so much, my god. It's so annoying. It just adds to the frustration. Keep these guys in place. I don't think you we broke them out, but my god. Get all the way to Vlogda. You, you're gonna die along the way. Can you not suck? Like, is it is it really that hard to suck? My god, look at look at all this lag. This is ridiculous. Seriously. This is so bad. I know we're pushing the engine of Hoi 4 as far and as fast as we possibly can, but it's just so ungodly laggy sometimes. And I'm sorry that I'm complaining so much. It's just the frustrations when you play this mod. And it just it just does not work sometimes. It just does not work. Oh great, there we go. Please don't get encircled again. <sighs> you stupid idiot. The one division you want to move around really fast, make sure they can do really well, and just like, nope. Game. Come on. Kill him. Kill him off. 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 I love a guy. Kill him off. Gaelic? Gaelic? Good. Good. Thank God. Oh, did they have these cord already? No? Alright. Um, anything else here? Not really. Not too much. How much more do we need, honestly? This is a bit ridiculous. A bit ridiculous. Can we just go here? They don't have any of this cord, so... Vologda should not be cord either, but, you know... I don't decide the game rules. Battle Barcelona. There you go. Oh, warp taxes. So a surplus. I'm not going to hurt her growth. There's no way I'm going to hurt her growth like that. Alright. The Unified Moscow. Good job, guys. Let's go there. Fish them off. That's fine. If you find them, just kill them off. Or not. Or just die. You know, you just die there, motorized. Just die. Pretty typical of the motorized just to just kill themselves off. About a force attack here, too. Come on. You're not going to be down here? No. Vologda is so close. You're not going to do that, son. How many men have we lost? 11,000? That's not too bad. Now, that should be enough to take out and capitulate them, right? That should be enough. Thank God. I'm sorry that I've, I've been just so ragey with this one. It's just... It's annoying. It's so annoying doing this sometimes. Um, Comey... Alright, Angos has a lot of people as well. That'd be good to do. And then, free Aryan prisoners. Well, uh, actually, do we do something? Uh, although we have smashed the rastiness of unsavory th thought that is Comey, remnants of the scum still scurried right under our noses. Sictive car was filled to the brim with political militaries, after all, and those that we did not kill or assimilate retreat into the shadows, whether to fight for the Republic or the Revolution. We will have to exercise maximum vigilance if we hope to return Sictive car into an Aryan stronghold. We must go house, to, uh, go house by house, door by door, if necessary. This bird shall show no restraint. God knows I will not show restraint to these pieces of garbage. Um, anyone here have loot? No, no. You grow. Oh, you grow. Looking pretty nice right now. Look at that manpower. Thank God. Free Aryan prisoners. While it still existed, the coming Republic served as a petri dish. Oh, I already read this one. So we're going to read this one again. Please go ahead. Minority rights. Nice. Silence of subversives. And blocked up. 
Communist victory ended. The subjugation of the Komi Republic was perhaps the most difficult pacification of a region we have faced yet, but we have prevailed. Siftikar was once a cesspool of political dissidents and argumentation, and the most vile degenerates were allowed to spread their wicked lies throughout fear. With their iron will and unyielding strength, we have purged these subversives and cleaned up the streets. Their dream of democracy in West Russia is dead. It is a testament to the glory of the Aryan race that we were strong enough to kill it. Oh, and there it goes. Uh, Goring is Spear wins. Well, okay then. Well, that'd be cool if Speer actually get, does win. Quite cool, actually, if he does. Let's see us go in if we can. Um, but we're going to duplicate these guys. Because this so applies. 40 combo width is the, the way to go. So, Akas is going to go drastically up for our army, but that's okay. I don't care what the cost is. Do we have any anti-air? We do. Nice. How's this looking? 0.33 billion? Not bad. Keep paying off the debt from now, and even though... Um, should we pay? Great. The Andy Impact? Cool. Well, we're close to having surplus. We have a lot of inflation. And then Operation Gamma? Ah. Slavic race is feckless and irresponsible, preferring to make take what it cannot create with its meager abilities. This is the reason for Russia's long-term backwardness, and it's also for the reason that a mechanized bandit army controls the city of Niederneustadt, writing the good people of the Reich for its own benefit. We should begin to pay back the enormous debt we owe Germany for exposing us to its, ugly, its truths by ending those wretched criminals' reign of terror. Nice. Do both of these two, and let's do equipment. Actually, no. How far are we on equipment? I'll give it one more month and we don't need to get equipment done. So, we're not going to do equipment yet. Maybe next time? Agriculture methods? Let's do workers. Workers are pretty good to do. That'd be nice. Alright, even more artillery? Yes, please. And can we now get some planes as well? That'd be very, very nice. Pre-war fighters? Yes. Early cast? Yes. Yeah, the economy's not looking so good right now. Um, growth is really bad. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought would happen. It's fine, whatever. We'll get more growth soon, anyways. Tanks for the Aryans? The tank, highly mobile and utterly unstoppable in its conquest, is a perfect vehicle for the Aryan. It is a masterpiece of engineering, and we are as we are a masterpiece of genetics. Now that the scum of the Niederneustadt have been smashed into pieces, its tanks, degraded by their use for petty theft, lie in our hands. Let our drown the eastern blood with its tanks' army. As we aspire to climb to its level, it is best that we learn from its example. Oh, we can form the, the group. That's not a bad idea. Um, yeah, a new focus tree shall become available on the resolution of the negative issue. We can wait for that maybe first, and then... Because we got a few more here left to do. Sweep the city. With the motor bandits cleansed from the city, we now hold one of the greatest population centers of Western Russia by its throat. Uh, our brothers shall go street by street, house by house, room by room, through Niederneustadt, killing the impure and burning their homes to the ground. Any and all signs of resistance shall be put down, and those subhumans who have the audacity to stand against the Aryans will be made to regret their choice. When the Brotherhood is done, no trace of the Slavic stain shall remain within the city. All weapons found within Niederneustadt will be stripped from the owners and to ensure that they submit to the will of the, un with the true Ubermensch. Where there was once a center of degeneracy, cowardice, and greed, a new city will be made, and shall become a monument to the bravery, diligence, and supremacy of the one true race. Niederneustadt will be made pure. Yes. Yeah, that's not looking good here, huh? Uh, the Universal Purge. If any state represents the failings of democracy, it was Comey. The dozens of flailing political movements and the parties that once dominated the city each fought for its own agendas more than for the people they hoped to rule. Is it any surprise that even in the face of our invasion they failed to unify? While the pathetic politicians squabbled and bickered over the minute differences between the false ideologies, they forgot the reality of the situation. They were at war. Bullets do not care about ideology, a lesson they learned too late as our armies bore down upon them, bringing the full might of the master race with them. The roof, violence, and bloodshed, we have shown them that politics and parties are no more than glorified clubs. Their members playing at rulership while well, the true masters of the earth know only one thing that matters, and that is power. Oh, our race has the power to conquer, so their race will suffer what it must. The gutters of Comey have been filled with the blood of politicians and party members of every variety. Communists and socialists, liberals and conservatives, the Brotherhood is even liquidating fascists of subhuman blood as we secure control. Their beliefs are un unimportant to us. Any pol all politicians are inherently weak, comprising creatures trying to cheat their way into power. The Brotherhood has no place for them. In death, their ideological differences are meaningless, and they are exposed for what they really are, pets. 
pests that the Brotherhood has exterminated. We have taught the people of Komi a lesson that all errands have known for years. That democracy breeds degeneracy and corruption that can bring low even the greatest of peoples. It is no wonder that a race as pitiful as the Slavs could not resist its effects. The Brotherhood has cleansed this stain from Russia, and the arguing politicians have finally been silenced. Unity breeds strength. Division breeds weakness. Never forget. Are there training workers as well? Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not really worried about this. I mean, minus 0.2%. I mean, almost 7 billion. We get enough surplus in two months, cut off all the debt to GDP ratio, and just rack up the amount that we're spending on the military, which we're, we're spending. We're, we're going to be spending a lot here. Uh, let's start working on this, actually, too. Why not? Some good production. Why not? Thanks for the Aryans. Sweep the city. Our own Blitzkrieg. During the West Russian War, oh, if you want to go better in just equipment, too, please go right ahead. But. During the West Russian War, our great foyer, Gutsrom Wagner, saw how the Germans fought, how they countered every attack, and drove them back the cowardly Russians. They called their method of war Blitzkrieg Lightning War. If, it, if we are to prove our status as a true Aryans, we must also harness the power of lightning for our brotherhood. With the vehicles of the motor bandits now at our disposal, we can finally achieve this. Our warriors shall strike like thunderbolts against the Slavic hordes, riding atop great pincers like the Germans did before us. The Brotherhood shall roll across Russia like an iron tide, the third and final Aryan conquest of the East. Already the men have begun integrating the captured panzers into their formations, painting the sacred swastika under the turrets to declaim them as weapons of the master race. We'll prove that it is the Aryan, not the Slav, who is the master of the armored warfare. Scanish for loot? Eh, might as well. Why not? We don't even get political power because we're integrating so many different places here. Is Shapiro gonna win? He conquered Borman. Honestly, I think at the, for Tiano. Like, they, for the Toolbox Siri, they actually made Speer more likely to win the war now. Well, not more likely, but has a higher chance to win. But he's not reforming. Oh, oh, he's still, oh, he's still fighting Hadrich down there. Oh, that sucks. But, Operation Hesselfranger? If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. But, neutralize the remnants. Uh, yeah. We have defeated the cowardly Reds in battle. They're cowardly soldiers asleep for their lives. They never stood a chance against the might of the Brotherhood. Their lands and peoples are now ours to do with as we please. All that remains is to hunt them down and destroy the remaining Slavic bandits who foolishly continue to risk the inevitable. Brotherhood patrols will sweep across the countryside, searching every forest and village for those seeking to oppose or escape a rule. Any town that might harbor terrorists will be severely punished. Captured bandits will be executed publicly, as a warning to any who might think of following in their footsteps. The people of the North will learn the same lesson as their southern brethren, die or obey. The final destiny of the Aryan races is within sight, and we must have the full subservience of our domain to reach it. The First Panzers some of our commanders hoped that entering the driver's seat of an armored fighting vehicle would awaken something in the Aryan bloodline, a talent, a latent talent, for motorized warfare that resides in all of Ubermensch. Unfortunately, this does not seem to have occurred. Several vehicles stalled out or broke down shortly after our test crews finally got them to start. One driver even managed to get his reclaimed panzer to start, but proving unable to work the steering or the brakes, crashed through a building before driving into a ditch. It seems that even the German soldiers must learn their mastery of the Blitzkrieg, not just inherit it. This has been a source of great frustration and disappointment for both the Brotherhood's military commanders and most trusted racial scientists. Luckily, some Panzers operators from the ranks of the Motor Bandits have proven to be of superior blood and are more than willing to train their fellow Aryans in return for exp expedited admittance into the Brotherhood. Some members of the Brotherhood have protested this, claiming that these men have not yet purged their Slavic corruption as every Aryan must do. Well, these fools do not recognize is that by mastering Germanic warfare, these men were already closer to, close to pure Aryan status before the Brotherhood even liberated them. Already this decision has borne fruit. Every day more Aryans are being retrained in the art of Blitzkrieg. Every day more Panzers roll off the, out of the factories, ready to carry brave warriors of the mass race into battle against the unclean hordes. Our commanders have been eager to adopt the Panzers into their strategies. They have modified their once infantry-focused doctrines to accommodate quicker, more powerful strikes concentrated on small points of the enemy line. Soon, the Brotherhood's armies will be so magnificent that even the Germans shall admire the military prowess of a race. No one can hope to manage the Aryan strategist. Oh, we actually lose attack and defense for IVs and main battle tanks. Uh, oh, that's not great. Hey, that's better better than point minus two, so. Their red idols smash. Though it is its head, it, adherents are dead or enslaved. The scene of the Bolshevik cult that once ruled the North remains. Statues of Marx, Lenin, and Voroshilov still occupy town squares so at Sengel, to Ukta providing a approving or providing. A reminder to the inhabitants of a past we seek to erase. This cannot be tolerated. These idols must be reduced to rubble. The old uh, portraits and the red flags will be torn down and buried in bonfires. The ashes scattered to the winds. All memory of the Soviet Union and its failures will be destroyed. New monuments will be raised, honoring the foyer and the brave soldiers who swept aside the Slavs and reclaimed the East for its rightful people. Russia is a failed nation, and the Russians are a failed people. Their legacy is of no use to us. The Aryan brother has triumphed over the Untermensch, and now we shall record the true history of the land as we see fit. Only the failure of the communists will be remembered. Only.
Only, only. We need a lot more anti-air and artillery. So now, we should have quite a deficit after doing all this stuff. And that's okay with me. Can we actually raid them and do well? I don't know, we could try it. Um, where is it? Down here? Uh, we could probably save and see if we can do it. I mean, give us a couple days first. They might just give in to our demands. You never know. They probably won't, but whatever. I mean, 40 combo with versus what are we fighting here is probably not too bad, but it's over river there. They do have forts and stuff, but oh well. Followed up with the end of the Bolshevism. The armies of the Revolutionary Front may have outnumbered us, but the communists have never stood a chance against the unmatched combat ability of the Brotherhood fighting men. So entrenched was Bolshevism at the heart of the Slav that only true Aryan warriors could annihilate their delusions of grandeur and remind them that their place is not as a master but as a slave. The collapse of the Front ended all organized resistance to our domination of Western Russia. The Aryan Brotherhood has banished the specter of Bolshevism and Slavic tyranny back across the Urals once more. The lands of Western Russia are nearly united under the rule of the Foyer, but it's not enough. Through the red, though the Red Menace may plague us no more, there are countless other threats to our race, both in Russia and abroad. We must never cease our crusade against the traitors and the Untermensch. Russia shall be Aryan, Russia shall be ours. As it should be. Now we should have more than enough time to make sure that our soldiers are strong enough here. We have 14 divisions, how does this hurt us? We do not get any more surplus, which is fine. And growth is still hurting, but it's fine, we're going. Besides the crooked cross, whether well, expected victories and triumphs against our lessers throughout the west of Russia, it is becoming more and more clear that we are beginning to attain greatness of the area. Despite our struggles and the measure that we had to take to maneuver ourselves into the position that we are now, the recent conquests and achievements that we have attained have made it clear to all but the most ignorant peasant Slav under heel: we are true Aryans. If this was not true, then how was our victory over the hordes of Tsars, collaborators, communists made possible? As true Aryans, we can finally place ourselves beside the hooked cross as equals to the German who, in their infinite wisdom, rampaged through Russia and enlightened our wise fellow few to our true calling. Now we can do equipment and integrate Ukta and then scam for more equipment as well. Go and train too, since these guys are very weak. These guys over here. Good job of you guys. Oh. Pay debt. Oh, that's okay. It's just like, I'm just like, what was it? was not going. We have 0 0.45, 0 0.483 billion in debt. Not bad. GDP went up and it actually went back down a little bit, but you know, it is okay. Still get a slight surplus. Not much, but a slight surplus. Tax cut might not be too bad. Actually, can we pick up a tax cut? We'll have a little bit of more deficit. Uh, yeah, I think we're okay right now. Um, we have nothing here. We're importing just equipment. You know, we might as well try it, right? Yeah. The corner was once Russia now bows down before us. While the task given to us by the errands to unite the rest of Russia lays before us, we must entrench our position in these lands. Let the purification begin. So we get at least uh, a new research slot. Yes, and we can invade Onega next. But I wanted that research slot immediately too, so. Construction, end of Bolshevism. Nice, nice. World Lord economic stuff, that's fine too. Red dusk. As men scrambled down the narrow hallways and even up narrow staircases, Alexei Novikov remained petrified. Every pump of his heart was a blood and beating suffocation into the very fiber of his being. After minutes of paralysis, Alexei finally stirred. His feeble legs found themselves wobbling. He lurched to an infirm posture, suspended over railing for support. Someone shouted, Come to Novikov, pushing the mother effing button. Push it. Fighting the overwhelming pain in his chest, Alexei leaned sloppily towards the console to his right, mustering what little remained inside to raise the ship's anchors. I have done it, he shouted as tears welled in his eyes. A sudden explosion followed his exclamation, finishing his descent towards a steel cold floor of panic, then unconsciousness. A gunshot woke him up, but a severe concussion prevented full awareness. Alexei's fluttering eyes could see the black uniformed men approaching, and on some subconscious level he understood. With little time remaining, memories flooded his mind, a serene pictured book to quench his anxiety. He thought first of his mother, her sandy blonde hair and soothing tone comforting him in the candlelight of their Moscow apartment. He tried to savor the moment, remembering the boyhood stories she had told him of Lenin and the revolution. However, the historical details evaded him, far less potent than the woman herself. The man grew closer in his peripheral vision, punctuating their summary executions of his comrades with disgusting jeers of Untermensch. They would not destroy his newfound serenity. He thought of those early days in Plesik. Sleeping next to his bunkmates, both nervous and excited to serve, like the stories of old, before his family had fled, he too would serve the people, a sense of purpose in this chaos. The pistol swung before his eyes, and they finally closed for the last time. The revolution would die that day, and its last believer executed by the true Aryans in the port of Erzengel. So ends the revolution. And let us begin for the invasion of Finland. We have no more planes to spare, god dang it. Just get there immediately, that's fine. Just to prepare yourselves. There you go. Get ready to go. 
Because my god, we're gonna rush through here as, as fast as we possibly can. Oh, no wonder you guys suck. You're only. Oh my god, they're so bad. Jesus Christ, they're so bad. It's your 20 combo with at the very least. But still, my goodness. Oh, peace conference? Oh, oh good job, Armenia. Yeah, we're done with making these motorized divisions. A new realm of aliens. There was a knock at the door. Gutrum Wagner rushed to open it. Standing behind the door was a postman holding a large cardboard tube. A delivery for you, mein Führer. Yes, yes, I've got it. Now piss off. Wagner snarled as he almost tore the package out of the postman's hands. He slammed the door to his office shut, sealing himself from the outside world. His generals and counselors with their incessant updates and questions would now have to wait. He'd been patient for weeks, and now his commission was finally here. He removed the top of the tube, the cap from the tube, and pulled out the rolled-up paper it contained. He hurried over to the table and unfolded it to take in its full magnificence. Well, that was beautiful, he under his breath. He was looking down at a newly commissioned map of the Aaron Brotherhood's realm. The cartographers had delivered a beautiful piece of work. He made it very clear that they would have to. He struggled to believe that the mass of territory that stretched from Etzengel to Kazakhstan, that started from almost nothing, just a tiny scrap of land around the bombed out ruins of Perm, of course. His race of superiority had meant his conquest was inevitable, but gazing down at the map, seeing the Brotherhood standing proud next to Germany and the colonies, it made him realize the huge odds he had triumphed against to build a pure nation in such a chaotic and impure land. He could not but smile, somehow. It was sure the great failure was looking down on him with pride. He glanced to the eastern side of the map, past the Urals. There were no nations shown there, just a black area labeled Dishvavisha Anaki. There was still work to be done. Russia was not yet cleansed or safe for his people, but the brother had proven the Aryan race is unstoppable, and they would not rest lo as long as there was a single subhuman staining the land of old Russia. A storm is coming to the east, about first. Wow, 99% poverty rate? That's really bad. But we're gonna go first west. The Aryan Code. The Aryan race is uh, triumphant. We have annihilated the squabbling warlords that opposed us and reclaimed Western Russia for the master race. Our momentous accomplishments will be recorded in history alongside the triumphs of our bro German brethren. But despite our victories, all is not well. Our new realm is unstable. We are a tiny minority of Aryans ruling over a huge majority of Slavic Untermet, who would like nothing more than to overthrow our young nation and undo everything we have worked so hard to achieve. We cannot allow Russia to be dragged back into this subhuman nightmare. Not when is this close to greatness. Our rule must be secured, and a new order must be brought down upon the East. The first step to achieving this will be to impose a new code of laws. This Aryan code will make it easier to administer the best territory we control with the efficiency and ruthlessness that define our race. Up until now, the Brotherhood has been an army on crusade, running wild and destroying the enemy wherever they were found. While this was perfect for when we were at war, we now find ourselves at peace, at least for the moment, and a much more disciplined approach is needed. Now we show the world that not only are we the are the Aryans unstoppable on the battlefield, we are unequaled rulers, truly the rightful masters of the earth. Can we go to war with these guys? And then outlining the castes. One of the most important matters the Aryan Code must settle is the issue of racial castes. It is a core tenet of the Brotherhood that the Aryan is superior to the Untermensch, but beyond that, the matter of the racial hierarchies has been left up to the interpretation. Some members treat all who are not full blooded Aryans and Brotherhood members as equally vile and subhuman. Others have taken a more nuanced approach and created their own systems of ranking bloodlines from true Aryans all the way down to inhuman mongrels, with any number of steps in between. We must clarify the Brotherhood's policy on this issue if we want to secure Aryan dominance of Russia and maintain the purity of our blood. A system of categorizing races based upon ancestry, physical and mental fortitude, and physical characteristics will be created to define the racial castes. The creation of the system will not be without difficulty. Already there are clashes between the Aryan hardliners who argue for a strict definition of Aryanism, and the racial saviors who are pushing us for a more inclusive policy towards worthy subhumans. We must put an end to the squabbling immediately. Alright, now a little bit more growth. We got a 10 billion in GDP. This is going up a little higher, which sucks, but whatever. It's fine. I'm not too concerned. Well, eight? That's a bit overpowered. Eight divisions, man, bro. Eight divisions? That's a bit much. That's seriously a bit much. Just in one tile? They got eight divisions up here, too? They gotta be really tiny, then. That's ridiculous. That's honestly ridiculous. Why does Onegas have so many divisions? I know they have their own unique focus stream, which I do need to play some time, but that's ridiculous. Hold on. Okay, the game is messed up. It's seriously messed up. No, total number of divisions. Eight to... Six, eight. Oh, okay. Now it's Finland. Okay, that makes more sense. I'm like, what? Why are there so many divisions? Yeah, no, you're going to force the attack. You kill off every last Finn here. I mean, 9,000 versus basically 6,000. Oh my god. Did they buff these? They buffed Onega in Toolbox Siri. They literally did. Because usually you just take Onega and that's it. If you wonder about this, please go right ahead. My goal for this episode was to get all the way through this part too, so... Um, yeah. This is exactly what I was expecting. Good! No, do not let them leave. Kill every single last one of these pieces of garbage off. You deserve nothing but death. Good. Good. Every single last one of them. One of three divisions? Wow. 
All right, well, I mean, I guess I see what the intentions were of the devs for this, but now that left them very weak. Everyone to be this, please go ahead. No, absolutely not. No peace with the Untermensch. Yes, Omega, please, yes, please. Game, why would you do that? Go in if you can. One division left. Should easily be able to win. Just go, literally just go to Vipuri and Helsinki. Uh, Turku. For the last effing time, I don't give a crap about hair color. I have dark hair and I'm more Aryan than any of you snakes. But I heard the Germans believe you aren't a real Aryan unless you're blonde. Are you seriously suggesting that the Germans are that stupid? Because that's borderline treason if you are. I have half a mind to execute you right now if you don't shut up. This sort of arguing uh, has become common among the Brotherhood's leadership in recent days. With Western Russia finally united under Aryan leadership, the time has come to answer several unsolved questions about the Brotherhood's laws. And the most important and most divisive of these issues is the official racial policy of the Brotherhood. Beyond the simple goal of establishing Aryan supremacy, lurks a complex web of intricacies that divided the Brotherhood into competing factions. It seems that every officer has their own answer for how long the, or how the Brotherhood should formally define and divide races, and any plan other than their own is a betrayal of Aryanism and a Slavic plot. Screaming matches and even brawls have occurred over everything from the legal status of the half Aryans to the different shapes of Untermensch skulls. Foya Wagner has become increasingly agitated as he's watched this infight would bring the Brotherhood to a grinding halt. To finally resolve the issue, is announced that he will form a council that will formally define the racial caste of Russia. The Foyer will uh, head this council himself, but it will include several other important figures in the Brotherhood, most notably Zygmunt Schultz. Schultz has become a leader of a faction advocating for an expanded definition of Arianism that he claims would act as a safeguard against instability and provide a necessary boost to Brotherhood membership. The Foyer is personally repulsed by his ideas, but his supporters are too, are too significant to ignore any longer. When the council assembles in a few weeks' time, every faction will have a chance to make their case. But only one faction can, of course, prevail. Oh, good. Oh, we got a lot more map right that way, too. Oh, we got this, too. I forgot about this. Uh, poverty. Poverty, 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 poverty. Wow, we don't have a lot of production units, do we? Versus a lot of grid power now. Um, poverty relief. Increase of inflation, but increase GDP growth as well. It's not bad. There's this one. Uh, this one? Is this one? Oh, no. Is it just this one? Poverty rate will get to improve. Yeah, I just do that one anyway, so it's fine. Hmm. Almost 100% percent poverty rate for the survival of the blood. Reduces strain. Teach Deitch the spirit. For the blood of the sur survival of the blood. The brother has been given two missions by Furia Wagner. <clears throat> Defend the Aryan race's purity and guarantee the survival of the Aryan bloodline. As the people forge a new state that will be the eastern home of the Aryan people, we cannot forget why we must not fail to meet these goals. The Aryan bloodline is the pinnacle of evolution, the biological expression of perfection. As we consolidate our control, we must undertake every effort to entrench the bloodline into Russia so that it will never be removed from its rightful home. We cannot be satisfied with ruling Russia. The Aryans must become the true children of the motherland. The Brotherhood will begin simultaneous programs of cultural assimilation and eradication. We'll spread Aryan culture, traditions, and language, all to encourage our people to accept their new heritage. To increase the progress of a race's entrenchment, we will erase non-Aryan culture elements, cultural elements from the East. The histories of the Slavs and other subhuman peoples will end, and the inferior Russian tongue will eventually be phased out entirely. While some may consider these steps extreme, they are necessary. We cannot allow the Untermensch to corrupt our bloodline again, not when we have finally achieved purity. Pretty much, man. Pretty much. Construction would be nice, but agriculture mechanization. Indonesian wars, very cool, very good. Mm. Science, research facilities increases. And district expertise is improved. 20% bonus for this one is not bad, but I do want to hire foreign instructors immediately. Uh, but slowly improve, it's not bad. Let's do this one, though. Military base, increased state GDP. Let's do, where's that one for industry? Just because it can give us the bonus to industrialization. Heavy machinery, no. We just had it earlier, what the heck? There it is. Improve work and training just because it'll improve our industrial expertise. And even though it's not, it's only 20% bonus to research, it's still extremely, extremely important in my opinion. Um, just because we need it. I mean, we we basically need it. No. God, no. Why would we do that? Um, we have way too much research. We literally have way too much research right now. Little brother needs blood. We want to build this again. Please go right ahead. No, thanks. I don't want to click on that. Bro, just go into here. Kill them off. A rational debate. And lastly, I don't know if you and your thugs are Slavs, traitors, or just cowards. Wagner roared the man across the table, but I know you are weaklings and you want to see the Aryan race weaken with you. Schultz stared back at him. He had hardly spoken all night, but somehow that sounds was louder than all the furious shouting. Wagner paused his tirade to catch his breath, and Schultz seized the opportunity. 
I remember this one too, please go ahead. My fear, I am no coward. I am proud servant of the Brotherhood. But before all else, I serve the Aryan race, and the Brotherhood is failing them. Right now, there are millions of Aryans in Russia who would make exemplary members of the Brotherhood. But they are enslaved. You have labeled them Untermensch, because they failed to meet some arbitrary standards you set years ago. It shows strength and wisdom to meet to admit that you were mistaken, and that you refused to. If there's a coward in this room, it is you. Ooh. For the first time that evening, Wagner was speechless. He had entered the room confident of his victory. He expected the council to be a mere formality, a chance to berate his advisors for the squabbling before they all fell in line. And so he had watched the tide turn against him. The more Schultz spoke, the more of the men seated at the table seemed intrigued by the promises of an Aryan majority within a generation and an end to slave unrest. Even some of Wagner's closest allies were struggling to hide their doubt on their faces. And now this upstart had the balls to call his own failure a coward? Wagner could see that he still held some support in the room. If he acted now before Schultz could tip the scales any further, he might still prevail. I'd recommend you be more careful who you call a coward, he said. I don't care how many, uh, many of the boys like you. I won't tolerate another slip-up. He turned to address the rest of the counselors. Now, I say we settle this in the only way it seems fair. A vote. A Wagner wins. The, only the best are Aryan. Schultz and the Savers win. Freedom for all Aryans. Hmm. Oh, we actually have a free doc here. Look at that. I don't necessarily apologize for a long episode, but this has definitely been a long episode for us. Two hours long. Pretty long. Pretty darn long. But teach Deutsch. We share the untainted blood of our Aryan siblings in Germany. Despite being equal members of the master race, our technology is much behind theirs. Part of this is explained by the scientific communities of Russia being run by Slavs for centuries, giving us a much worse scientific base to work from. But even in recent years, as the Aryan people have reclaimed Russia, <clears throat> our advances have been few and far between compared to our marvelous stories we hear from across the western border. There can only be one sensible explanation for this, our language. Though we are of one race, German and Russian Aryans are divided by language. It is clear that the Russian tongue with its Slavic influences and archaic alphabet is holding us back. Luckily, a set of solutions already apparent years ago. Some members of the Brotherhood's officer corps took it upon themselves to learn Deutsch, the language of Germany, as a sign of their admiration. This trend quickly caught on, and there are many influent fluent speakers already within ranks. We should formalize the teachings of this tongue, making it the official language of the Aryan Brotherhood. The Brotherhood will require every member to learn it, and all schools and universities within our borders will only be allowed to teach in Deutsch. The transition may be bumpy, but if we are ever going to catch up with the brothers in Germany, it is a sacrifice we have to and are willing to make. But we'll do this one first, just because we want to reduce the administrative strain. Fulia Wagner has outlined two goals for the Brotherhood in this time of national reclamation. Defend the Aryan race's purity, and guarantee the survival of the Aryan bloodline. As we build a new nation for the master race in the fertile lands of Russia, we must not forget why we are undertaking this mission. The Aryans are the chosen people, the rightful masters of humanity. While we consolidate our rule, we should remind the members of the Brotherhood that their duties are not over simply because they are not at war for the moment. Any savage can conquer wilderness, but only an Ubermensch can civilize it. The Brotherhood will task its soldiers with a civilizing mission. We will order them to purify the lands they have subjugated, making them safe and productive, and introducing a spirit of racial pride to the Aryans that we have liberated. The Brotherhood cannot afford to delay on this issue. While none dare oppose our dominance of Western Russia, our race's sanctity is still at risk. Only when we have achieved total control over our territory, transforming it from a war-torn wasteland into a productive, prosperous, and unified state, will the Aryan people be secure. But I have to end here because... Well, this video's gone on long enough. But if you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we'll push further and further east, reclaiming all of our lands. Thanks for watching, and have a great Nova Postcal rest of your day.